<laughs> he loves it. <laughs> Deep bad boy. Deep bad boy. Deep bad boy. Deep bad boy. <laughs> Wow. And, you know, Dick can't reach the bitch. It looks like he has no legs. Deep bad boy. It's like Deep a floating disembodied morph. Deep bad boy. Deep bad boy. Deep bad boy. Dude, this Deep is the official boy. dance of Deep Fat Ride now. <laughs> I, want, I want the whole fucking dance floor doing this at the Deep next meetup. Damn right. Oh my god, it's perfect. <laughs> wow. Hey everybody. Welcome to <laughs> a special intro. <laughs> Welcome to uh Wow. Sorry, Howard. <laughs> Welcome to another uh Why edition. would you be sorry? That was fucking glorious. <laughs> What's wrong with that? Anybody that makes fun of that is a person I don't want to know. <laughs> Can you uh, do that, TJ? Can you do a thousand of those? I don't think I could do a thousand. I don't even think I'd do one of those. Yeah, it seems like it'd be really painful, honestly. Like, it seems like it would put a lot of weird strain dude, on I my neck say that, and stuff. Uh, Howard Bloom's neck must be fucking swole, dude. Swole neck. It's got the I mean, neck like, of a silverback gorilla, dude. Just a big old tree trunk like, of a neck. He's like oh, doing yeah. this. And I mean, he does that 1,500 times. That's pretty impressive. His neck must be like fucking crazy strong. Yeah. And uh, hey, we have. Uh, oops, that's not what I wanted. We have a. Oh, that is what I wanted. It's just Scotty's still up there. Yeah, here, Scotty, you piece what of shit. What the hell, dude? I was Error. enjoying that. TJ right, has fine. committed yet another error. error. Go ahead, then. You can do it. Error. What do you want me to do? I don't know. Shill the Patreon, I guess. Hi. It's me, Jumpin' Scotty. And I got a great Patreon for you. Do you want a buffet? Only five bucks a month. You want even more? You're still fat? You're still hungry? Ten bucks a month. Go there now. I don't even know what I'm doing. Well, I for one am convinced. Dude, that was that was basically a lot of ads that I saw in the 90s. Dude. <laughs> it really was. Wasn't it had it? a very 90s tone to it. It sure did. Wow. It's a retro ad. I'm impressed. <laughs> Hell yeah. So yeah, Patreon exists. Please give us money. Um, yeah, so that's that. I just got that out of the way. Because otherwise, guys are like, we need to shield the Patreon more. Need we more do. patrons, we damn do. it. We <laughs> always need. Papa more. needs a new pair of shoes. If we want world domination, TJ. Which we do. How are we going to achieve that without we'll more patrons? I don't know. What good is a buffet that has a million tortillas, but not enough people to eat all the delicious burritos within? I thought you didn't blame me. Like, he hasn't, doesn't benefit. From, like, Scotty wants it. Everyone knows you take all the Patreon money and fucking gamble I it all wish, away. I wish, dude. I fucking wish that's what they ranked risky, was. Risky back alley bets on college football games, dude. Look, the fix is in, guys. Just give me the money. I'm going to double it. Oh, can you believe what happened? I had to pay my bookie. Sorry. Yeah. I do apologize for that, guys. Northwestern's quarterback's Paul, got a got a pregnant girlfriend. Look, Paul, I got a couple hundred got, got a couple hundred notes for you. There you go, Paul. <laughs> Is that gonna cover your rent? I thought you're not gonna cover my mom. Sorry, man. They got a batch of rigged <laughs> hockey pucks for the next Ducks versus <laughs> Angels or whatever the fuck. I don't even know two hockey teams the, anymore. The, the, the teams that play. Pass up, pass along a note to Scotty. They got a they got a crooked dog running on the <laughs> Santa Monica track this, this Wednesday afternoon. Put it all on number twelve. <laughs> they've been roiding they've been roiding that fucking dog up. Look at that dog. Look how beefy he is. Muscly as a fucking ox, and I'm, I'm telling, telling you, you what, pass it along to Scotty. He can't lose. The fix is in. <laughs> I, I wish that's my life, dude. I went and sprained each one of the other dog's legs last <laughs> night. If the fix is in, pass it to Scotty. Oh, hey, this might be something you might like, uh, Paul. What's that? Uh, so apparently, this has two of your favorite subjects in it. Okay. AI and Trump, dude. Trump Does it I? involve making a Trump AI? Because I hope not. Uh, sort of. Oh. This is uh, AI wrote fake Trump speeches, and 60% of people couldn't tell the difference. It sounds about right. In a test of how online technology could be used to interfere with the upcoming presidential election, six in ten people could not tell the difference between a real speech from President Trump and a fake one generated through artificial intelligence. So what you're saying is... is so basically we've created artificial it's stupidity. It's already happened. 
Is that what's going yeah, on? Yeah, we, we've uh, weaponized Donald Trump's artificial intelligence state. Well, I want to see a fucking... Do they have a sample of this shit? I want to read the damn... I want to read the damn AI speech. Ugh. Oh, well. Robo-Trump, dude. Robo-Trump. Interesting, though, because it says Trump supporters were more likely to think the AI-generated text was real. Younger people uh, were more likely to believe the AI-generated content was real. So the younger generation, you have any hope for them? Nope. Nope. They don't even know what the fuck's going on. They're the ones getting fucking fooled. Okay, boomer. Okay, boomer. Boomer. Okay, boomer. boomer. I guess those, I, I guess us boomers boomer. just like facts. <laughs> Scotty. Facts not feeling Scotty. 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 Yes, Scotty. Yes, Scotty. Yes, You're a boomer. Okay, boomer. Boomer. I'm a boomer. Okay, boomer. I'm a boomer. I'm not a boomer. Okay, boomer. That's the offensive. That's the offensive. Hey, you're a Shut up. That's the offensive. Shut up, boomer. That's the offensive version of boomer. Boomer. I, I'm a boomer. Boomer. A boomer. Wow, this has gone too far. I have defeated everyone. Shut up. You are a boomer. I am right for you are a boomer. Uh, yeah, a boomer. I'd like to respond with okay, boomer. Okay, Bill. <laughs> oh, okay, well you put me in my place. Yep. Okay, Bill. We don't even need you. why do we even need any other insult anymore? Okay, Boomer. Okay, Boomer. <laughs> Listen to how triggered we Defeated. are about this okay boomer. Defeated. Shit, man. Defeated. We all hate it. I hate it. It's right up under our skin, which is why it keeps happening. <sighs> I can tell when I'm being played like a harp from hell, TJ. I played this stinking city they like know. a harp from hell. <laughs> they know it. <laughs> they know that it bothers us, man. We just got to admit it. We just got to be like, you know what? Yeah, yeah but it bothers me because it's so lame. No, it bothers you because you you know you're. A I'm not even now. a fucking boomer though. It, in the context it's, of this, you I are, am. Though. Yeah, right. Because yeah. you hey, have look. a boomerish mindset. Well, you know what? It's Compared- not about age, TJ. It's about personality. I got gotcha. you. You're close to new ideas, TJ. You're a yeah. goddamn boomer. You're a boomer. Okay, boomer. I'm not a boomer, TJ. Okay, boomer. I fully support the youth and everything okay, they boomer. do. Everything they do. Okay. Yep. He says I'm while hip. getting paid uh, forty-five to fifty percent more than a Gen Z counterpart. <laughs> I'm hipping with it, guys. I got. I know what's going on. I'm hip. I know what these kids do on this TikTok and Snapchat. I understand what they do. Yeah, dude. I'm hip to the lingo. I yeah. get the memes. I saw a meme today. Yeah. Hey, everyone. I have brought over some um dank memes. Yeah. I thought we could uh maybe. Have May Mays. Yeah. yeah. I thought we could uh, spend time on Snapchat together uh, looking at hilarious Ex- videos. Exchanging um, said memes. What, <laughs> what 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 do kids do now to communicate? I don't know. I'm not really sure. Let's get on the Discord and talk. Yeah. Oh, you know, you can. Uh, Amazon has a, a thing where you can shop Oprah's favorite things. That's pretty cool. Oprah's. Yeah, you can buy like all the stuff that Oprah gives the thumbs up, you know? Oh, my God. What's yeah. she selling today? You want to see? What's an Oprah favorite for today? I don't know. Let's see. Let's, Let's see if take it a looks look. like something that Oprah would have anywhere near her house. Uh, no, it's Keep all... Keep in mind that she's... Ordinary a... people can afford it, so I'm going to say no. What is it? I don't know. She's like, it's the Oprah section, dude. Well, I want to know what Oprah's yeah, selection fucking... is. All right. Well, here it is. You can fucking buy I can't these. can't see it. Uh, you can't see it? Yeah. What... Stupid fuck. All right. It's Oprah! So you get Sorrel's out in a... Bout boots. Okay, so I want those, obviously. Haas Labs liquid eyeshadow. I definitely want that. Echo Dot Kid Edition, so that you can spy on your kid, of course. Uh, Here's some other stuff. Here's some glasses. Those are nice. Dude, a hooded lounger, TJ? Oh, here, get you some Truff Hot Sauce. White Truffle Limited Release Gourmet Hot Sauce, bro. I didn't know about that shit until Oprah put me onto it. It's the same one Hillary keeps in her purse. Uh, yeah, she got. Do you think Oprah Hoss. owns anything that we've seen so far? The hot sauce. You think she's? <laughs> I mean, she's definitely got that. <laughs> you think she's definitely got the the big? Hell bottle yeah, of the hot sauce. dude! Of course she's got the hot sauce, dude. I would think that celebrities. It's possible they could. Own oh man, some I want this, shit. dude! I want the female trailblazer. Yeah, Oprah don't own this. Team A Jemison, bro. Dude, where's the Greta Thunberg shirt? I don't know. They need to do a Piccolino of. <coughs> Greta Thunberg, dude. It's kind of offensive they had that. <coughs> is that the astronaut that died or something? I don't know. Who Isn't cares? Dead? Who cares, Scotty? Are they dead, dude? Who fucking cares? Look, they have uh, sneaker boots. She's 175 bucks. Okay, now I can. I, I might Get want this. Get you a goddamn griddle. Now I might boy. want a fuck. 
Oh, oh man, five, you can make whoa. French toast on five hundred forty nine dollars. Fuck no, I don't want this piece of shit. Holy Look shit! Look at that fucking French toast. I don't though. give a fuck, dude. How the fuck? Marginally less <laughs> good French toast. How the fuck you charge that much for a fucking five hundred goddamn griddle, dude? How the fuck, dude? Dude, no it's fuck. a gourmet griddle. Dude, you can go buy a Why? gas. You can buy a huge gas griddle for like two hundred and fifty bucks. This is five hundred and fifty dollars, dude. No way, man. Well, look, Scotty, one cooktop, endless, Scotty, and yeah, endless possibilities, possibilities endless possibilities. So I mean, you got to think about that. <laughs> I mean, you this buy is a it, fucking bitch? investment, bro. You know what, TJ? Won't you buy it then? Tell me how it is. Maybe I will. You Maybe won't. I will. I ain't buying that. It's too expensive. Um. So let's uh let's talk about these two gentlemen, man. These two gentlemen, bros, man. Excuse me, TJ. Yeah. Gentlemen. Yeah, Disgusting gentlemen. despotic dictators. Let's talk about these two refined, regal, intelligent, charismatic gentlemen that we see before us uh, right both, here. I'd argue they're both charismatic, but those other descriptions, TJ. Well, we just here. got me tooed out of fucking existence. Thank Tale you so much, Tale of the tape. Well no, well, no, we didn't. We yeah, didn't. we did. I didn't have sex with Hitler. You just blew both of them. Oh, yeah, you're right. It did. Dude, Stalin was pretty fucking short. Well, let me ask you this then, since we're me too'd off of uh, existence anyway. Yeah. If you had to blow one of these guys, Stalin, dude. Stalin. Why get, Stalin? Because you look, look. This is older Stalin, but young Stalin. I mean, look, was way better looking than young Hitler. Mm, that's true. So I mean, if we're, I'm, I have to go based on appearance, <coughs> I mean, which is pretty superficial, but that's what I have to go with. Plus, Hitler yeah, I go, only... I go the other way. I look at Hitler and I see he's probably got a smaller peepee than Stalin. Plus, had. that's what you so think. It's going to be an easier blowjob. Well, you know what? I, one thing I thought about Joseph Stalin I was totally wrong about is I thought he was a big dude. He's actually quite small. Oh. So you see here. Uh, Sometimes this, short guys have big, thick ones, though. You that's know what true. I mean? So here we are on the right have Adolf Hitler, height 5'9", yeah. mustache style toothbrush. Yeah. It's the official name of the mustache. His reign was from 1933 to 1945. His talents were art. Everyone knows that Hitler uh, was an artist before he became a, a dictator. And famously rejected from art school. Right. Uh, mimicry. Apparently, he was actually a pretty talented uh, mimic. He could imitate people. And uh, <laughs> Was he like that black dude from back in the day? Remember that could like the, the well, dude that was in Police Academy? I never actually saw any. Uh, I never saw Hitler's impressions, but apparently he did impressions of people that were around him and uh, world leaders and so on and so forth that were apparently pretty accurate, but. Damn. Then again, when the guy who when a guy can kill you if you don't laugh at his jokes, who knows how genuine? Why didn't they film really that shit? Oh yes, my feeling. Oh yes, so funny. And of course, genocide. He loved genocide. Uh, so on the left here, I'm sorry. On the right, we have. Uh, so I should have said left with Hitler. I think I said right. Uh, so on the right here, we have Joseph Stalin. He was a uh, five foot five. Mm -hmm. Actually, might have been shorter than five five. Uh, that might have been. They might have been sneaking an inch they in. They said actually, you could. Uh, they don't know his exact height. It's kind of like give or take an inch. Whoa! So he could have been as small as five four, or he could have been five. You know, six. we'll be generous. Five five. His mustache style was wal. It was called the walrus mustache, which uh, you know, there's still people have rocked that one to this day. Not too many people rock the uh, toothbrush mustache anymore. Um, his uh, Stalin's reign was from 1922 to 1952. His talents, uh, bibliophile, which means uh, collector of books, uh, poet, and uh, genocide. They both, they both agreed on genocide. I kind of like, I mean, like their other talents, I mean, you know, bibliophile, that seems pretty cool. A poet, I I'm down with that. Art, mimicry, I mean, genocide, that's kind of where they lose me. Yeah, it's a little, it's a little much. You know, you're hanging out with them like, so what do you, what do you like to do? You so, know, I like art, I like mimicry, and I like, you know, uh, approaching all the Jews. So those of you who are familiar with our uh, thing we do here when we put two people against each other, here you go. Um, so we got some categories. There's seven categories, so a tie is not possible because uh, no one likes a fucking tie. That's why none of those versus movies were ever any good. They always try to make it a fucking tie. Bullshit. There's going to be a fucking winner here. So the first question is... So, what we, what did it, oh, so here's my question. What are we determining with this? Like, What's the ultimate goal of Hitler versus Stalin? Well, who was the better dictator? Let me fucking uh, I'm, I'll 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 give you a brief uh, sort of introduction to it in a second. Okay. Actually, I guess I could do that now. Um, so here's the thing I wrote out. The name Adolf Hitler is synonymous with evil. Can some Can you guys, uh, Paul, Scotty, yeah. why don't you Why don't you give me some ominous background music? The name Adolf Hitler is synonymous with evil. But often people will complain about this, saying, Joseph Stalin killed more. 
It seems that these two men are often pitted against each other for various reasons. And I see no reason why DFF should be left out of the fun. Tonight, across seven highly scientific categories, we will ask ourselves which of these two men was the better, if that's even the right word, of the two notoriously evil, genocidal, dictatorial lunatics. All right. So basically, I couldn't really figure out what to frame it because I didn't want it to be like most evil or something. The thing, the thing about these guys is they're both genocidal fucking dictators right. who are responsible for millions of deaths. So who was better at that? Okay. Yeah. So, of course, the first category is the all-important who had the better mustache. I'm already leaning pretty heavily in one direction here. Oh, shit. Well, let's, let's explore before we make any determinations. All right. That's fine. I understand we're all going to have our own kind of gut pick- reactions. Paul, but I know you shall pick me. We'll examine it. Who was the bigger jerk? And I'll explain that a little bit later. It's pretty obvious both these guys were fucking pure evil. But You're a fucking jerk, dude. Let's ask ourselves who's the bigger jerk, because it's not the same question. We'll get to it. Who'd win in a fist fight? I think that's important. Who was smarter? Who was the better leader? Who had the higher kill count? And who had the most redeeming character traits? Because obviously, even if you're the fucking biggest piece of shit in the universe, there's usually at least one thing someone can point to and be like, well... He did pet that puppy that one time. I mean, look, if we're going to go for who's a better dictator, I mean, it's kind of hard for people not to say Adolf Hitler just off the bat, TJ. So, I mean, Stalin's got this episode of pretty uh, compelling information that's got to come out about him. Well, we're going to, I mean, like, Stalin's reign was longer. It was, you know what? But who's more remembered? I mean, it's hard to argue that Adolf Hitler's not the most remembered dictator of all fucking I time. mean, you know, definitely when it comes remembered to... Remembered for what? His failure? <laughs> his success his utter ruin in a right. bunker somewhere so basically the way it works is at the end of each round each of us will vote yep and because there's only three of us there will be a winner for each round and uh the whoever wins the most rounds wins the whole fucking shebang what if we want to split our vote you can't it's not fair dude i don't care sound like a fucking dictator just like these assholes well, maybe i am so the first question is who had the better mustache which of these two mustaches was better? So the fucking Hitler mustache, once again, is called the toothbrush mustache. Well, it used to be called that. Now it's called the Hitler mustache. Yes. So um, here's a, a thing. This is from baldingbeards.com, which... Now I know <laughs> Do we exists. really need a website for everything? Um, anyway, so... What the Hitler mustache says about you. If you're brave enough to wear a Hitler mustache, you certainly have thick skin when it comes to criticism and dirty looks of others. Considering that you may be the only person in your neighborhood slash town who wears it, you don't mind being different. I guess that's one way to think of it. What facial shape best fits the toothbrush mustache? A smaller mustache often suits a round face. Okay. Um... How to grow the toothbrush mustache. I think that's pretty fucking basic, right? You yeah. grow a regular mustache and then you shave the fucking sides off. Or you just or you, know, you just shave right. the sides Stop as Stop shaving along. that part of your face. Right. You can do it either way. What famous people have worn the toothbrush mustache? Let me see. I don't know. So Charlie Adolf, Chaplin did sport one of these. Yes, he did. But it was pre Hitler. Uh Charlie Chaplin, uh yeah, a lot of people there was actually a rumor f- growing around for a while that Hitler was inspired by Charlie Chaplin. Well, maybe that is, so. If he was a well, great no, mimic. We actually, we actually know the reason why Hitler shaved his mustache down to that. Oh, really? Yes. So uh, so we'll explain that. Well, in I'm going to have actually. to factor that into my... Uh, Michael Jordan had it? Yeah. How did you know that? <laughs> yeah, uh, Jordan had... Well, I mean, it's not... I, I don't think it's necessarily it's not a, the same dude, thing. Well, what happened was Michael Jordan was in a commercial, and pretty much everyone who watched the commercial pretty much had the same thought. Like, um, does Michael Jordan have a fucking Hitler mustache now? And he yeah. did. And, um, but he was rocking a soul patch with it. Right. So that kind of mitigates it a little bit. Plus, he's black, so doesn't have the same vibe. And, of course, Charlie Chaplin. Right. That's and, definitely uh, the same thing. You know, around the in the early uh, 20th century, was not an unusual mustache style. There was a lot of people that rocked it. <laughs> um, <clears throat> I mean, some of them were just like... There were there were mustaches that weren't this that were just tidier and smaller and kept neat like I think Charlie Chaplin's getting dangerously close to that kind of look here too. Mm-hmm. It was like a triangular, tidy little mustache that people would run around with. That right, is not the straight stripe of a Hitler stash. And I yeah. think Charlie Chaplin's just barely on the edge of having the same kind of Absolutely. mustache here. 
So we actually do know the reason why Hitler shaved his mustache because he was ordered to. By who? By his uh, superiors, his commanders, when he was in the army, when he was in the Bavarian army. So you see here is a picture. I don't think that's actually of Hitler, but that's the uh, style of mustache Hitler used to rock back in the day. So like a kind of a like a little toned down Dali stash going on there. Kind of. Uh, it was called a. Uh, Untrimmed Adolf Hitler's original mustache style in 1914 and his later distinctive toothbrush mustache. Oh, that, that is Hitler, then? Yes. Okay. Uh, well, no, it says his original mustache style. Oh, okay. I don't know. I, that might be him. It might not be. Um, I think it is, but I'm not 100% on that. Uh, his mustache is instantly recognizable and sinister in history. Yet, according to new research, Adolf Hitler's early life, the distinctive toothbrush shape uh, that adorned his scowling face was not his first preference. A previously unpublished essay by a writer who served alongside Hitler in the First World War uh, trenches, reveals that the future Fuhrer was only obeying orders when he shaped his mustache into its tightly clipped style. He was instructed to do so in order that it would fit under the respirator masks introduced in response to British mustard gas attacks. Had that order never been issued, the tyrant who brought most of Europe to its knees would be remembered as the man with a large Prussian mustache. Prussian. Yeah, so apparently uh, Hitler used to rock this very different mustache style, mm -hmm. but it didn't fit in the gas masks that were necessary for soldiers to not be susceptible to mustard gas attacks. So he was ordered to shave it, and apparently it just stuck. Well, I mean, it, obviously once he became famous and had, he wore that for years, I mean, you know, you can't just change your image drastically. I don't so know. I think he would have done even better if he would have grown back that twirly, triumphant yeah. bastard on the left. Think about that mustache speaking the lies of the devil into your ear. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, you know, another great thing about it is um, I actually read that Hitler, uh, <laughs> during his time, I mean, obviously this mustache uh, experienced a, an incredible decline in popularity after Hitler. I have no idea why. Right. So Hitler pretty much destroyed this mustache to this day. Right. Um, it's now thought of not as the toothbrush mustache, but the Hitler mustache. Um, Hitler at the time, actually, uh, a lot of people criticized the mustache even then, saying it looked silly, it looked ridiculous. It was not a very popular look for him among some people. And Hitler said, you know, they may not like it now, but one day they'll all be wearing it because I wear it, you know? He thought that he was going to be this great trailblazer and he was going to make this mustache a super popular thing. He got the opposite. But uh, it was pretty much the exact opposite. He he ended up getting a place in history where uh, <laughs> yeah. pretty much no one wants to sport this anymore. This, this facial hair instantly uh, ties you to Adolf Hitler. So, I mean, you can still have it if you want, I guess, but just buyer beware. I can't think of a single person I've ever encountered out in the world with the Hitler Maybe mustache. Seen I didn't know that. Maybe one or two people with this facial hairstyle. It's it's usually just like edge. Like the uh, the person I remember seeing rocking it one time was fucking Gigi Allen's brother. Yeah, that Merle. makes sense. Merle Allen would rock the fucking Hitler stash with his bald head and shit. Can you pull that up, TJ? Yeah, sure. Yeah. It, I mean, like, yeah, as far especially as can, if you find any of his interview footage from that fucking documentary they did. Because as far as finding other contemporary people that have had it, yeah, I don't. He he went on, I think it's Donahue or something, sporting that mustache at some point. <laughs> yeah, here we go. I got him. Hold on. It's going to take a second to get it over here. Don't make fucking excuses, TJ. I want it now. We know what we want, and we want yeah. it now. So when it comes now, you got to keep in mind here. When it comes to uh, look at the he did the chops and the Hitler stash. What a trailblazer! Yeah, but man. when it comes to Edge Lord, pioneer. This dude was in a band that was basically like no Edge Lord can ever claim to be anywhere near as edgy as this band was. Yep, Gigi was definitely Gigi was on a different level, and any dude that followed him around to gigs and played fucking in his band for as long as Merle did. <laughs> Absolutely. Has has claim to the edgelord throne, if that's your thing. But yeah, you don't see people walking up and down the street. I proclaim you king of the edgelords. Hooray! But uh, you'll also notice that you know Merle isn't beaten to a fucking pulp either. You know what I right. mean? Somehow he was able to go around. Maybe it was, maybe the chops soften it for people. I maybe. Think so. so the uh, the Stalin mustache is called a walrus mustache which is characterized by whiskers that are thick, bushy, and uh, drop over the mouth. The style resembles the whiskers of a walrus, hence the name. 
You see there Nietzsche uh, sporting an insanely large th- uh, walrus mustache. Well, they, they describe it as a walrus handlebar, so it yeah. was like, you know. So it was a wa- walrus mustache and a handlebar. It's like a, it's kind of a hybrid. Yeah. But uh, you also see the second example they uh, give here on Wikipedia is Stalin. So he is uh, the second most famous walrus mustache and probably the most famous pure walrus mustache. Yeah. They will say Mark Twain, TJ. He didn't really ruin uh, this mustache the same way that Hitler did, though. Like, you could walk down the street with this mustache and people wouldn't be like, oh, shit, it's like Stalin, you know? It also, it's Jamie from Myth, uh, Mythbusters. That's that's true. So, yeah. Yeah, I mean, so people still have this. So, you know, Jamie from Mythbus- Mythbusters ain't walking around sporting the Hitler, you know? Right. Not only that, but the Hitler mustache is literally named for Hitler at this point, even though it used to have a different yeah, name. Yeah, nobody's calling that the toothbrush anymore. Yeah, no one, but no one, and no one's calling this uh, the the Stalin mustache. You Not know? really. There's just too many the like, Stalin because it's not dude. it's not distinctive enough. Uh, when like I the think way of Hitler's his mustache, is. I think of like old West guys more than anything. Yeah, you that's know true. What I mean? Like, you know, uh, especially like you think of like Tombstone, yeah. with, like Sam Elliott or some shit. I, I'm way more likely to associate it with Sam Elliott or fucking uh, what's his name? Uh, played Wyatt Earp in that movie. I, I'm just Kurt brain- Russell. Yeah, Kurt, Kurt Russell. Russell. Kurt Russell had a fucking sweet one of these in that movie. So, I don't think of it as a as the Stalin stash. Right. No, I don't think most people do. So why did he grow it? Uh, Stalin's mustache was, in many ways, a reaction to the beards of his leftist predecessors, such as Karl Marx and Vladimir Lenin. After Lenin's death, Leon Trotsky wrote that, for young people, Lenin's beard becomes a very important element. It seems to symbolize maturity, manliness, and the fighting spirit. It was essential for Stalin, for his political purposes, to differentiate himself from those who came before. While Lenin and Trotsky favored uh, civilian coats and ties, writes Oldston Moore, Stalin, from 1918 onward, opted for military-style tunics, trousers, and leather boots. The mustache, uh, rather than the beard, was a symbol of was a I'm sorry was the natural complement uh, to this choice. His deportment declared that he was more militant and less cerebral than his communist predecessors. So the mustache was part of a package deal. It was basically his way of differentiating himself from some of his competitors at the time. Right. Because, of course, there was a lot of different people within uh, the communist, uh, very variations of the vying communist movement vying for power. I over prefer the, movement. the beards. Yeah. And he, but he was trying to go for a more like, you know, everyday working class kind of thing. It's kind of a weird line of, like of thinking because, like, they have that bit, you know, especially Marx. He was like, look at the profound amount of beard that I have. And he, he, what's the line of thinking that leads you to, like, I will have less beard? <laughs> I don't know. Less beard is the way to counteract that. I think it was because the beard at that point had kind of symboled, like, this sort of intellectualism. Which uh, Stalin might have been an intellectual, but he didn't want to be perceived as one. He wanted to be perceived more as a like, I'm the guy Every that goes man. out there and gets shit done. I'm a fucking doer, I mean, not it, a fucking talker. It is a stern kind of mustache. It's not. It's a mustache you'd you'd expect to see maybe like a a cop wearing. You know what I mean? Oh yeah, like a like an old Southern cop or something. Boy. It's definitely like a kind of it's kind of a looming mustache. It's very geometrically appropriate. You know what I mean? Not only that, I think the mustache might be part of the reason why I thought Stalin was a bigger guy than yeah. he actually was. I never thought he was some kind of giant, but I didn't. I mean, know I didn't he think was he like was a giant, but I thought five, he was like five or below. Yeah, I didn't think of him as a short dude. I no. always thought of him as a dude that was probably like, you know, around six foot, well, six foot one. He's always portrayed looming over. The right. subject of every one of these state yeah. pictures well, that he took. That's propaganda for you. And everything I mean, about him is, you... yeah, you know. But, you know, it never, I mean, Hitler never came across, like, a huge guy. But, yeah, but Hitler had a larger-than-life personality. Like, Hitler, like. Well, so did Stalin, but. Well, I'm saying, but, but like, yeah, but a lot of Stalin's shit, I, I believe, was more manufactured. I think Hitler had more, probably, charisma. Oh, he definitely had more if, charisma. If you see, like, a speech with Hitler, it's like he's ha- he has a fucking uh, stadium just eating out of the palm of his fucking hand. You know, really, I mean, Stalin was just like, I'm in power and that's it. That's more of just yeah, like Yeah, but he didn't exist in a fucking uh, culture that allowed for that kind of shit. He had to be a different kind of leader. Sure. Well, look, I mean, a lot of Stalin's uh, contemporaries actually were more like the soaring rhetoric kind of right. people. Stalin's whole thing was more about saying, uh, you know, like he made, he wasn't a bad orator necessarily, but his speeches 
perhaps owing to the fact that Russian was not his native language, um, were much more like curt to the point, direct, everything about him kind of, he cultivated sort of an air of like simple, but effective. You know what I mean? Well, he looks it. He looks, he looks like military, right? He's trying to look, he's, everything about him is very military, militaristic in his approach. The, the, not necessarily in terms of, the Uns wear similar kind of like shirts too. Oh, they're definitely inspired by this. Mm-hmm. this like you, he kind of like my my thought process is a little backwards because I see way more of Kim Kim Jong Un and you know his pre- predecessors now than I do Stalin. So I was like, oh, he's in a Kim Jong Un shirt. But it's no. also it's also really a throwback to the way that leaders used to be. It was like the head of, you're the head of the state and you're also the head of the military. And right. I mean, so I mean, in, but in that sense of like total authority. Right. So let's kind of look at these guys side by side and kind of see what their mustaches are doing for them. Here we go. So here we have these two fuckers. Too blurry. Yeah. I can just go back to the original image if you think that one's too blurry. Yeah, just yeah, it is too blurry. Uh, uh, so so here we go. You can kind of compare them here in this uh, tail of the tape image I got. Um, so, like... I would say, like, what's the principal difference between the aesthetic of these two guys when you're looking at them as it relates to their mustaches? Because I think Hitler has much more of a fucking inflexible sternness to him. Even though Stalin's got that going, too, he definitely looks a little bit more inviting, you know, relaxed and at ease, almost like a sort of like, you know, like a like a confidence. Right. You know? Hitler has a look right now, like you just interrupt him in the middle of like something really important. He's just and he's just seeing through you, like what the fuck did you say? Like Stalin looks like a little. I mean, he kind of like has more of a, like I'm just kind of a relaxed, confident person. Hitler looks more like I will destroy you with the sheer but power. What, of what my about will. that? Is mustache though? Because that's what we're talking about, here. right? So when it comes to the mustache, I think that you know Hitler's mustache being so narrow and rigid. I would say I think dra- kind of contributes to that sort of fucking look, and, and it, it draws kinda- a tr- it draws a triangle on his face too, because like so if he goes eyes down, you see what I'm saying? It kind of draws it y- your attention to that, so it almost like it's like something where it sticks out. So yeah, you, no- it, you it, almost notice that first. I feel it. like it kind of emphasizes like the 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 slender sort of bony nature of his face, which kind of enhances the harshness of it. Right. And, I I can agree with all of that, and I think with uh with Stalin's face there. You know, he has a little bit more of a rounded face, I feel like. And, uh, you know, he looks a little bit less... He looks a little bit more inviting and friendly, so I think that mustache kind of is almost like... If he didn't have that mustache, he wouldn't necessarily have that... the Any intimidation factor, you know what I mean? Well, I mean, I don't think Hitler would either. Yeah. I mean, both these guys clearly have mustaches for a fucking reason. Right. And it's just like, which one to me commands more? Like, for me, I got to be honest with you. I go with Stalin. I think that it's less of a pariah mustache because it's more classic. Yeah. And I don't think you can expect what's behind that mustache. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's a big question mark behind that. It might be a nice old grandfatherly figure that's on the fucking city council and the parks board or something that just loves watching the fucking Robins in the winter. Or it might be a fucking dictator of a country. Right. Just, or it might be a cowboy that'll drill you as soon as you fucking, you know. Right. And there's definitely, I mean, it's got more of a a practical look to it. But then again, I think about Hitler and I think about like, you know, the thing about Hitler's mustache is it's so iconic at this point. It's not trying as hard, man. You even said that at, at the time that Hitler was wearing this, you know, a lot of people criticized it. Right. Nobody was criticizing Stalin's fucking stash. Dude. Probably not. Maybe in the gulag. But the thing about Hitler's mustache is it's so iconic. It basically bears his name at this point. He basically destroyed that style of mustache for all of history. I mean, that is kind of Whereas epic Stalin right Stalin just kind of participated in it. Right. I mean, like, He's so, just a notable I mean, you member you have, you of that, think about that I do think about the fact that who, Hitler... Who wears a particular... Hitler's mustache yeah. is way more iconic, Yeah, but for today, sure. Who wears a style of clothing or a fucking... Some has some feature that they basically end it. Like, imagine if you had ended long hair or something. Right. Like, no one wants to have long hair because T.J. Kirk did it. Right. So, I mean, like, it's just crazy to think about how fucking iconic that mustache is. And how, it's like, tough, man. Like, it's like you say. I mean, like, Hitler basically made that mustache. You yeah. know, if, it'd, be, it'd be probably associated most closely with, like, Charlie Chaplin or who knows who would have sported if it hadn't gotten the, the negative reputation it did. 
But, you know, Stalin, he was more of a participant in the mustache, but he's a very notable participant, and I think the mustache works really well for his look. You know, it's obviously I mean, it an iconic it. fucking look. It completes it. Right. Well, it and would th- be incomplete without it. Are you guys ready to vote, or you want to discuss this a little bit more? I mean, I think we can. I think there might be photos that kind of show what Hitler and Stalin would have looked like without mustaches. Maybe that could help us make a determination. Sure. If you can find that, yeah. Let me see if uh, if anyone's depicted that. Why? Right, so here is what the here is a uh, here's what Hitler would have looked like without a mustache, according to at least this person. Okay. I think this is a shop. I don't think this is a real picture, but. Yeah, I mean that's a totally different. Yeah, looks totally different, doesn't it? He's not even Hitler anymore. No, that's weird. Here's a uh, colorized one I could show you, where it shows you the original photo and it shows you their uh, interpretation of what he would look like without the the mustache there. If it'll open. Thanks, Reddit pics. <laughs> Fucking piece of shit. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, he kind of looks like the old guy in fucking Return of the Living Dead that's trying to teach the teenage guy how to do the job at the mortuary. Yeah. (laughs) I see it. Doesn't he? Yeah, kind of. Oh, shit, dude. I gotta call the boss. (laughs) But you notice how much of his Hitlerness he loses just when you subtract the mustache? (laughs) He loses, by my estimation, just eyeballing it, 100% of his Hitlerness. It just just it, it melts away. You need that stash, man. What about Stalin? All right. So unfortunately, it looks like no one's done. I mean, like it's been done, but it doesn't seem like anyone's done it well. Well, they're having to remove. Okay, a here lot we go. More shit. Here we go. All right, you found a good one. So it's crazy. The crazy thing about what's uh, about Stalin is he actually looks a lot younger without the mustache. Damn, he does. Yeah, I mean, this is not as good of Yeah, I mean, a, this is uh, like, shoot. you're going to have to use your imagination a little more with this. Because this is about as best as they got. Right. He definitely has almost like that kind of like, you know, almost advertising kind of face. Like, he has, like, he has very proportional features. Yeah, I mean, he's definitely, uh, it kind of draws attention to the fact that, I mean, it, it's pretty obvious that he was a more attractive looking man than They've Hitler. They've clearly just taken somebody else's yeah, mouth. Yeah, they put another mouth right. on it. So, but I mean, like. They couldn't keep his mouth because his mouth is pretty much covered by the mustache. Right, but they couldn't so. find somebody that was like not grinning yeah, not, like an yeah, idiot. Not, not, a, not a really a great one. Um, like I said, you're gonna have to use your imagination a little. Sure. Uh, man, that's a tough vote, TJ. Are you guys ready to vote? Or are you guys? I yeah, don't know. I I'm ready of, to I, vote. I think I've seen enough. I've got my mind made up here. I'm gonna buck tradition and give my vote to Stalin. Wow. It's one for Stalin because I'm 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 saying the fact that he didn't need to be so defined by that mustache, but the fact that he wore it so effectively, it just he it wasn't trying as hard, and it's still a mustache that's acceptable to wear. You know, he didn't ruin an entire mustache style. Uh, I'm gonna go with Hitler and I think the because I think the toothbrush beard is lame too. Yeah, that's my last fucking point. Is I think it just is kind of dorky looking. It definitely is, but I mean I don't know. Hitler rocked it so hard. It's so iconic to the Hitler imagery. Uh, he doesn't even fucking look like Hitler without it. Oh, shock, shock! TJ's voting with Hitler. Who so would have saw I gotta that vote coming? Hitler. I gotta vote Hitler, man. Who yeah, would have saw that coming? Uh, puts me in a fucking. So you the tiebreaker, Scotty? What you feeling? I have to award half to each, TJ. No. All right, then I, I, I'll have to abstain from voting, TJ. No. <laughs> You're compelled to give your opinion. <laughs> you have to. Damn, dude, this is very authoritarian. Yep. Yes. Well, let's fucking <laughs> look at the episode we're doing. <laughs> I know. Uh, you know what? In some respects, at least Don had the better mustache, but I have to ultimately vote for Hitler because the edgelord in me just goes, you know what? To ruin an entire thing for everyone for all time is kind of epic. Hashtag the Kirks love Hitler. <laughs> Hashtag they vote for Hitler. Hashtag the vote Kirk for Hitler. The Kirks ride with Hitler. <laughs> when you ride with the Kirks, you ride with Hitler. Damn. Voting block of Hitler. <laughs> All right. So the next question we're going to ask ourselves is um, who was the bigger jerk? You're a fucking jerk, TJ. You're Who was jerk. the bigger jerk? TJ, you're a jerk, dude. You're a jerk. I agree. You're a jerk. I gotta get to the fucking imagery. I have. You're a fucking jerk, TJ. 
There we go. Error. All right. So, Error. who is the bigger jerk? Let me explain this category because I think it might be a little confusing. I'm not honestly. confused. Maybe we're not it, talking about who was meanest and who killed the most people. Right. We're not talking about obviously genocide makes you a jerk. But we understand that. that. We know they're both evil. Of course, but not all jerks are evil, no. and not all evil people are jerks. Sometimes the person who is polite and friendly to your face is plotting to rape your mother in the ass the second your back is turned. Sometimes the person who's a total prick to everyone around him is the one who saves your mother from being raped. So there's a difference between being an asshole and being evil. That all being said, who was the bigger jerk? Not who was the most evil, who was the bigger jerk who was between the bigger jerk? Hitler and Stalin? Okay? Okay. That's the fucking question here. So we're going to start with Hitler here. Hitler was capable of turning on the charm. Here's a few quotes from a woman named Erna uh, Flegel. Erna Flegel? She might, might be Flegel or something like that. Okay. I'm going to go with Flegel. Flegel, Schmuggen. Flegel, Schmuggen, Schlagel, Gulagen. She was actually with Hitler in the bunker during his uh, final days. Okay. So here's something she said about him. I was in the building and someone said, the Fuhrer is here. The first time it didn't particularly affect me. He was away from Berlin for a long time before someone announced again, the Fuhrer is back. Hitler shook hands with all the people he hadn't greeted before after he talked to us regularly. His authority was extraordinary. He was always polite and charming. There was really nothing to object to. Um, she also described Hitler as being very kind to the uh, children of uh, Joseph Goebbels. He also liked the animals, didn't he? Yes, he did. He was an animal lover. Um, he would uh, drink hot chocolate with Goebbels' kids and stuff, who, by the way, the one, his kids were like, they, they poisoned their kids, I yeah, think, they at did. some point. It's fucking mm-hmm. crazy. And when they decided they were going to lose the war. Dude, um, what a fucking Austrian-German thing to do, drink hot chocolate with people. I know, right? Oh, yeah. Guten Tag. Yeah. So Hitler, uh, here's another thing she said about Hitler. Hitler required no care. And she was a nurse is why she's specifying that. Um, I was exclusively there for the care of, of the wounded. To be sure, he had aged greatly in the last days. Now had a lot of gray hair. Gave the impression of a man at least 15 to 20 years older. He shook a good deal. Walking was difficult for him. His right side was still very much weakened as a result of uh, the attempt on his life. Uh, so he, there was a, an assassination attempt against Hitler where there was an explosive planning. Yeah, watch the movie The Valkyrie. Or yeah, whatever you can just watch that ha- that terrible um, Tom Cruise movie. Or read about it, whatever. Yeah, you could also read about it like a fucking. Just like, <laughs> so this kind of calls into read. question that like uh, downfall <laughs> scene that got memed to oblivion, where Hitler, you know, is being real mean and dismissive with everybody. Well, or not. Mm, I mean, at, at his final days, so, when power slipping away. Well, here's the thing about Hitler. Hitler had a tendency to be pretty chill and cool with ordinary people, like people that were beneath him, because they kind of he kind of liked to be that savior in their minds. Right. But when he was amongst the people that were like in his inner circle and stuff, he could be a little bit. Well, we'll we'll get to it. So a little bit of uh, backstory on Hitler as a child. Um, He was described as a bright and loving kid, actually. But his personality changed when uh, his younger brother, Edmund, died of measles in 1900. Uh, At that point, Hitler became much more morose, much more sullen. He began to fight constantly with his uh, very domineering and abusive father. Uh, His schoolwork began to suffer. Um, So he had kind of this really fraught relationship with his father, but a really good relationship with his mother, who he loved a lot. He was definitely a mama's boy. Um... There's another uh, example of, uh, of a person who knew Hitler talking about him. This is Hitler's bodyguard, whose name I'm going to butcher, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with Roshus Misch or Raucus Misch. I don't know. Uh, he Raucus descri- Misch? <laughs> Raucus Misch. Sounds like an NPC from a video game or something. Well, that's his name. He described Hitler as uh, friendly and nice. Uh, called him a good boss who liked to chat with, quote-unquote, ordinary people. He described Hitler as a man who would stay up late watching movies like Gone with the Wind and would get emotional over military defeats. He said he would, you know, Hitler would ha- get tears welling up in his eyes as he talked about the latest German defeats. Uh, he emphasized strongly that Hitler was a real human being, quote-unquote. 
Um, so obviously, the dude had a to this day. If he's still alive, I mean, is not. there really anybody out there making soft the, spot for Hitler? Making the actual argument that this guy wasn't a human being? Um, yeah, I feel like there probably is. I feel like there's a lot of people who kind of just portray Hitler as like a, a almost like a Saturday morning cartoon villain, right? Um, which no, well, re- which real, he kind of has been. Real sure. evil, real evil is not quite so banal and predictable as that, you know, and so obvious. Um, yet Hitler seems to have had few, if any, close relationships, keeping most people around him at arm's length. He has been variously described as lazy, uh, with uh, disorganized work habits. Uh, he was certainly dishonest, as he was known to break agreements, most famously with Stalin himself, actually. Um, he disregarded the advice of his generals on more than one occasion, fancying himself a military genius, despite mounting evidence to the contrary. Um, uh, one of his most notable personality traits, with I think, which I think that speaks to, is that uh, a lot of people who knew Hitler basically have an idea of him as a, just completely and totally and utterly inflexible. Right. He was an extremely closed-minded, uh, control freak kind of personality who would never yield an inch to anyone around him on any issue at any time. Wow. It was impossible to change his mind. It was impossible to get him to own up to any of his failings. Like, if if, uh, if he made a decision that led to a military defeat, which happened a shit ton of times, mm-hmm. he would never own it. It was always it someone was, else's fault. They didn't fault. listen to him properly or something. Right. Like it was always someone else's fault because they didn't do it right or something. He never took any fucking responsibility for shit he ever did wrong. Uh, part of the reason he liked talking to ordinary people was because he didn't like to be around people who made him feel inferior in any way because Hitler was a massively insecure dude. Dude. Like thirteen year old me and Hitler sound a lot alike, dude. Yeah, I know. Ne- right? ne- never wrong about anything. <laughs> Hitler was he was riddled with insecurities. He often yeah, blamed others too. for his mistakes. Uh he had a lot of defense mechanisms that uh pr- that was to designed to kind of protect his uh ego. Really fragile ego. Um it is known that uh Hitler not only suffered from chronic anxiety that he was uh, being medicated for. He also had insomnia. Um, Often linked. Yeah, and uh, he also had irritable bowel syndrome. Yeah. Uh, once in power, he maintained a, a very close relationship with his personal physician who uh, helped manage the anxiety symptoms with numerous medications, uh, many of which were uh, highly unorthodox. Um, it's said that he was uh, sedated with barbiturates and stimulated with amphetamines. As I mentioned about Hitler, uh, his childhood, you know, his doctor as a child was actually Jewish. Yes. And, and, saved, uh, and saved his life. Yeah. And uh, and actually, then he was actually given a special dispensation and not killed <laughs> during the Holocaust for that. So it's a crazy thing about Hitler. <laughs> well, they were giving him uppers and downers, if that yeah. report is to be believed. Right. So basically, like, you need to sleep. Here's your downer. You need to wake up. Here's your upper. Basically, here's your speed, and here's your fucking heroin to go to sleep. Right. So uh, he's just on, and it said Hitler came to be completely dependent on these drug cocktails to keep him going. Um, now, be, this I take with a massive grain of salt. It's it's honestly, for a, such a notable figure, it's really hard to get to the meat of who Hitler really was because uh, there's obviously a lot of anti-Hitler propaganda out there. You know, so it's kind of hard to know necessarily what's true, what's not. I tried to pick the things that seemed the most likely to be true based on people who actually knew him and actual reports. And there was a big CIA report back in the day about what, you know, they uh, not not the myth making, not the myth making. Yeah, I tried to avoid a lot of the myth making shit. But it, with him, it's like you it's don't possible. It's, you, it's so tangled. There's no fucking discerning what's what. So but this next section is really way more speculative. Um so numerous mental health illnesses, I'm sorry, mental illnesses have been uh, posthumously attributed to Hitler by various uh, intellectuals and scholars and so on and so forth. Um, so here's some of the most common ones that he's claimed to have had. Uh, histrionic personality disorder, paranoia, psychopathy, narcissistic personality disorder, sadistic personality disorder, borderline personality disorder, PTSD. And a whole host of other ones. I even saw some people claiming he had schizophrenia. It's impossible to say if any of these posthumous diagnoses are accurate, but what you can say with certainty is that Hitler was messed up enough that 
serious intellectuals have made strong cases for a lot of these fucking things. So what you can gather from that, while I don't think it's possible to even diagnose someone posthumously with, with one of these disorders unless it's just super fucking clear. I mean, it's all the still signs. a hard thing to diagnose people properly when they're now. alive, right? People well, get misdiagnosed, and, <clears throat> you, you know, it still happens. But what's clear is that Hitler did suffer from some sort of mental illness. Um, it's At the very least, we know he suffered from anxiety because he was being medicated for it. Right. Um, and that could mean it seems, any number of things because <clears throat> none of those <clears throat> disorders existed when he was. So right. anxiety is a giant blanket term. Yeah. Does he have the, health anxiety? It does seem generalized anxiety. Uh, There's so many kinds. It also seems very likely that he did suffer from PTSD. Um, well, he was in uh, World War One. He was, and so. he was temporarily blinded in an attack, and uh, he did see a lot of crazy shit, and a lot of crazy shit happened to him. So, and he he was he won a lot of medals and shit too. So obviously he was uh, right there in the thick of that war. A lot of people at the time had what I think was being called shell shock at the time, and uh, I don't know what it was being called in Germany, probably something else. Uh, but he he probably suffered from that, um, at least to some extent. But uh, there's no way to know for sure. So uh, the portrait I've just kind of portrayed of Hitler, um, very inflexible, very prone to outbursts of rage, uh, very insecure, um, you know, uh, is he's basically kind of what you would, I think what you would expect Hitler to be. But also kind of very, uh, he turns out this gregarious kind of like friendly personality. Well, I mean, yeah, if he didn't have the ability to turn on the charm, he never would have got as far as he did. Yeah, so life. I mean, at and least then, with like people that, like you said, weren't any sort of threat <laughs> to him in any way, like, you know, just like, I'm, you know, your fucking servant or whatever. Oh, I'm your buddy. I'm cool. So, yeah, Hitler was not the kind of person that would look at, like, uh, someone in a servant position. And, That's, like, totally beneath him. In that yeah, way. he didn't. I mean, even if he thought of it that way, he didn't want to be perceived that way. He wanted to be he wanted to be the good boss. He wanted to be the nice guy. He wanted to be like, oh, isn't that nice that he takes the time to talk to some nobody like me, even when he's got a whole country to run and all this stuff. So uh, that was he definitely had uh, a sense of how to be as a politician you know, right there till the end days. I mean, like he's in his bunker, he's on the verge of defeat, and he's still, you know, taking time to shake hands with people and make chit chat. So, um, you know, you could find, I think, a little bit of uh, redeeming sort of character traits in there somewhere. But obviously, overall, not yeah. surprisingly, the pathology of Hitler is the pathology of a massive dick bag. Yeah, of course. I don't think anyone's shocked by that. <laughs> no, not really. Um, Hitler's an asshole. Are you sure? <laughs> Can't believe Hitler was a jerk. Well, Stalin's gonna be. It's all gonna be uphill from here. But Stalin, though, I mean, t I'll be honest with you. Stalin's personality, just the nicest guy you could ever want to fucking meet. You know, other than the murders and shit, super cool. Uh, so anyway, here's a, a Russian historian named Robert uh, Service. Stupid fucking last name, by the way, uh, on Stalin. So an interview asks uh, uh, Robert Service, let's talk about Hitler's, uh, sorry, let's talk about Stalin's personality. What's your own assessment of him? So Robert says, Stalin was an exceptionally competent political leader. He didn't have all the skills. He was a pathetic orator. Well, I say pathetic orator. He was good at doing simple things. He was a sort of barking speaker, not in the sense of being mad, but he barked like a dog. Now, he didn't have any of the flights of Fansky, of Trotsky, or the eloquence of Lenin, so even as a speaker, he wasn't all that bad. But as an organizer, as someone who could master a brief, as someone who could appeal to his leading comrades, as someone who could think geopolitically across a whole range of politics, society, economics, and culture, as an active dictator, as someone who was going to poke his nose into everything and instill fear in his subordinates, he was an exceptional leader. Not just as a brute. He was a brute, but he was an exceptional leader, a very bright and intelligent man, as well as an almost psychopathic killer. So Stalin was known for his, I'm speaking from my thing now, the right. quote, end quote. Stalin was, uh, was known for his violent temper, but he was also very patient, which seems like an incongruity, because most people you know with a fucking crazy violent temper 
Well, not really. Are not very patient people. Well, think about this. If you have a lot of patience, but your patience runs out at a certain point, like, if you're super patient, you've waited a long time for results. That is absolutely true. Then it's like, you know what? Fuck this. And I'm mad at you. You know what? Off of his head. I see what you're saying. but Simmering anger is way stronger than anger that's immediately barked out at anybody who crosses you. That's true. But... He was a little bit different about it than what you guys are talking about. It wasn't like it kept building and building and building till it got to a broke, breaking point. He might have been fond of the old Klingon proverb, revenge is a dish best served cold. Because he was capable of holding a grudge basically forever. Ah. Uh. And he would strike out not when the anger reached its apex, well, when they ever, they but may- just whenever he saw now is the time to strike. So right. he would hold anger in. Until it became time to fucking unleash it. So he was it. someone that would bide his time. Like, you know, well, this isn't the best time to, to take this action against this person. Let me just wait. Then it might be two years later. Then boom, they're dead. It could be. Yeah, it could be or whatever. It could be fucking a decade later. Wow. That's it could be a fucking infinite time later when when he sees the opportunity for that revenge. When he sees like, hey, my political opponent's position has been weakened. That's exactly when he fucking unleashes that fucking uh, his vengeance on them. It's like some Game of Thrones shit, dude. Uh, well, if you think about it, though, that's kind of what you have to be if you're going to be the dictator yeah. of a country. Well, Hitler wasn't like that. People, right. The second you pissed off well, Hitler, you were fucking pretty Hitler, much dead. It, Hitler, well, yeah, but I mean, the, the same thing seems to matter here, too. I think if he thought he was in imminent danger, he would have killed somebody immediately. But if he just knew somebody had seditious thoughts about him yeah. or had gone you, against you, him you in you the past. You wait till that moment of right. like, let, let them betray themselves. Let so them then, continue yeah. making money for me. And then when they're at their weakest, that's when I fucking lop their heads off. Yep. That was his mentality, 100%. As a young man, he was boldly daring and courageous. But as he grew older, he became very paranoid and fearful. Uh, Some people say he lived in an almost constant state of terror from the various threats that he perceived all around him. Uh, Other traits attributed to Stalin were intelligence, an excellent memory, uh, a tremendous amount of self-discipline. I mean, if you're going to hold a grudge for 10 fucking yeah, years. Right, obviously, yeah. And have multiples going at any one time. Yeah, yeah I think the memory thing is Remember probably guy what made snuff- him stand out. Uh, fucking scuff my shoes. He's going to fucking die. Super organized. Uh, very modest in terms of uh, his lifestyle for the most part. Rarely indulged in uh, drinking. Uh, stubborn. Not to quite the extent Hitler was, but very stubborn. Uh, very petty guy. Would, uh, would Once again, yeah, holding yeah. a grudge for 10 years. Right, extraordinarily petty guy. Um, suffered from low self-esteem, though. Always, He kind of also had a, a, a little bit of that insecurity that we saw in Hitler. Well, I mean, yeah, a lot of that aggressiveness can stem to, uh, from insecurities that people have and this like attempt to mask that right. with this kind of set of armor that's ultimately false. It's shielding a a way more uh, neurotic person underneath the exterior. Absolutely. So it looks like that they share as well. So uh, as far as, uh, you know, Hitler was really good at uh, talking to people that were beneath him. Stalin was much better at talking to equals. So here is a a historian, David McCullough, uh, talking about Stalin. Stalin nearly always made a good impression on foreigners. Churchill, who once called Russia a riddle wrapped in a mystery inside of an enigma, and who warned both Roosevelt and Truman repeatedly of Russia of the Russian menace to Europe, confessed still to liking Stalin the man. Roosevelt, who had been convinced almost to the end that he could get along with Uncle Joe, the truth is, Jimmy Burns, uh, former Secretary of State, recalling Stalin's performance at Yalta, he is a very likable person. Joseph E. Davies, uh, who had been an ambassador to Russia briefly and would be at Truman's side daily in the uh, post-Dom conference table, uh, had said in a superficial and immensely popular book, Mission to Moscow, published in 1941, that Stalin was uncommonly wise and gentle. A child would like to sit on his lap and a dog would sidle up to him, wrote Davies. uh, Davis. Even Eisenhower, after vi- after a visit to Moscow that summer, would describe St- Stalin in much the same fashion as benign and fatherly. So he was really able to pull the wool over those fuckers. Oh, eyes. yeah, totally. Oh, yeah. Like, I'm just old Uncle Joe. How you doing? So, I mean, like, that's that kind of there's it, there's an ability that Stalin has that Hitler doesn't have. Stalin can be stern. And he can be imposing. 
but he can also just like flip it around and be like, oh, he's he, he's just so gentle and fatherly and kind and wise. You know what I mean? Right. Like Hitler really can't pull that off. That's just an asshole, dude. I mean, he can kind of, you know, like they said, he'll shake your hand. It'll be nice to you. He'll chit chat. And I'm sure he could be fucking whatever. Uh, he he expected him. I think he fancied himself a little closer to royalty than Hitler did. Oh, for sure. Or at least when it came to how he wanted to be perceived. So Hitler, I feel like from what TJ was saying, was more of a glad hander with Joe Public. Right. He saw the value in that in being seen as humble and nice and you know Yeah, Stalin wasn't as concerned with that. He wanted St- Stalin he wanted, wanted his to project peers. the fear. Yeah. Right? This is the king and the king's will is fucking law and who would ever fucking question right. that? Right. Well, the other nations but he he's was also with... but he was great at seeming innocuous too if he wanted to be. Right, but they, it Part did of the say rate... that he wasn't as good talking with the populace right. or the public at all. Not as, no, he he didn't have the he didn't have Hitler's charisma. He didn't have Hitler's. Um, when it came to that, now no, he, no, it not, seems not like he on had the mass charisma. psychology level. No, when talking to you know political, uh, you know people that were in his sphere or people from other countries that were high up in the command structure, right. it seems like he was able to throw out the the charm pretty well, well. Like you know, you hear him described as benign here. He was very good at seeming benign when he needed to. anything but that. Right. Well, one of the reasons that he was able to fucking uh, defeat like Trotsky and some of his other fucking political enemies was because he was able to be underestimated by them. He was always able to seem just a little. He wasn't, you know, he was a fucking brilliantly smart guy, as we'll find out later. Maybe he's not perceived that way. But he he plays dumb. He plays dumber than he is. He acts more clueless than he is. He seems more benign by a fucking country mile than he actually is. Until he has all the power in the country. Yeah, and then all, you know, so, but he was capable of projecting absolute authority or signaling to you, like, I am no threat whatsoever. I am your friend. I am a likable fucking, you know, self. I mean, he was, he was uh, self-deprecating as well. Like, he'd make jokes at his own expense. He'd invite you to have a little laugh at his expense, you know, like harmless kind of stuff. So, you know, he had a lot of his defense mechanisms were a little bit more sophisticated in my mind than what Hitler's were. Uh, He was also uh, a family man. Unlike our buddy Adolf, here he is with uh, two of his kids here. Uh, Most of his kids did not end up having uh, super great lives. But uh, we'll learn. There's a little snippet about the family. There wasn't too much out there. Looked like he was getting kind of a, the starts of a nunt at this point in his life. A little too. bit of a nunt starting to happen. Maybe if that was a little tighter, he would have it. Yeah. Um, so about Stalin's private life, little is known beyond the fact that he uh, seems always to have been a lonely man. His first wife, a Georgian girl named Ikatra Sfondiz, died of tuberculosis, a terrible disease that yeah, we all know what tuberculosis is. Right. Um, and he called her Cato, actually. And uh, it's it's interesting because after she died, uh, he said something akin to, like, the, my last shred of concern for humanity died with her or something along those lines. Uh, his second wife, uh, Nadiza Al- Alujuva, Sorry, Russia. Uh, Killed herself in 1932, apparently uh, over Stalin's dictatorial rule of the party. The only child from his first marriage, Jacob, fell into German hands during World War II um, and was killed. Two children from his second marriage outlived their father but were not always on good terms with him. Uh, The son, Vasily, uh, an officer in the Soviet Air Force, drank himself to death in 1962. That's him here, by the way. Uh, the daughter, Svetlana, fled to the United States in the 1960s. Whoa. So um, had a, he was a family man, but it seems like there was kind of a pretty tumultuous relationship with family. with uh, A very dysfunctional family. You know, his wife committing suicide and, uh, you know, one of his children uh, dying at war and another one drinking themselves to death and another one fleeing to the United States, basically saying, fuck this uh, Soviet Union shit. So, with all that being said, who was the bigger fucking jerk? Man, it's tougher than I thought. Yeah, this is a tougher category. Because it, it, like, I don't know. In some, in some contexts and in some interactions, they weren't jerks. Right. Both of them were capable of being charming, friendly people who could actually get you, you to know, trust them. 
I think at the end of the day, with everything you presented and just <clears> hearing, <throat> I, I have to vote for Stalin. I think just the ability to, like you said, like maintain power as long as he did and, and to keep it, he probably need to be a little bit bigger of a jerk than Hitler was. I think Hitler, some it was it was so you know more prone to outburst and you know you know have a quick temper and reaction that doesn't allow him to be as much of a jerk because his feelings are more known then. Yeah, I mean Hitler was definitely the kind of guy that would bite your fucking head off if you fucking went up against him. Stalin's the kind of guy that's going to act like oh. it's okay, and then you turn up dead from like yeah. hanging yourself <laughs> or whatever. Right. The fucking next day or two weeks later or whenever it fucking suits. Ten him years to do later. It. Yeah. Ten yeah. years later. I mean, so I mean, just so Stalin is definitely a little bit more of a snake in the grass than Hitler. Hitler's more of an outright asshole. And that is a being a snake in the grass is a jerky thing. It is absolutely. You know, and he was he seemed like he had that down, but it's also a jerky thing to just lash out at people. It is, and also, but like you know, the thing is, I think. I think it's kind of tough because I think Stalin was capable of being a bigger asshole, but I also think he was capable of being more genuinely nice. Whereas Hitler, you know, I feel like he's more of a, you know, he's not quite maybe as big an asshole in every regard, but then... But he liked dogs. Yeah, and you know, he had... He was genuinely nice. That's he was genuinely nice to nice. dogs, he was nice to kids. So he was capable you know? in yeah. some level I mean, of being Stalin genuinely nice. I mean, Stalin fucking basically... I mean, you didn't get into it here, but fucking basically ripped his own family apart. I mean, he just did a lot of jerky fucking things. Hitler didn't really have that going on. I mean, Hitler never never really had a family. Yeah, but I mean, so, was so it, he didn't, have, it didn't he, exist. He, didn't, he couldn't be a jerk to him. He didn't really impose his bullshit on a bunch of other, you well, know, like, well, obviously but, he did, but. <laughs> yeah, 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 wait, wait a minute. That. Wait a minute. <laughs> he didn't fucking do it to, uh, so, to a family. He didn't have a family that actually yeah. had to live with him well, yeah, 24-7. Like so we're not talking about the, the geopolitical consequences of things he did as a politician. Right. We're talking about so, his personal Taking about his personal life. He, Hitler didn't st- impose it on a family. Well, I'm voting know? for Stalin. Um, Scotty has wooed me over to the Stalin camp. I think Stalin, at the end of the day, bigger jerk, probably. Uh, you know, it's really tough for me, but I'll go ahead and uh, and, and vote with you guys. Damn. Surprise. That's I kind of came down to which one of these dudes would I rather have as a boss? The hothead guy that's going to blow his stack all the time or the yeah. dude that's going to you're going to slight one day and not even know it. And that's then, what I'm saying. You know what I mean? <laughs> He's going to come back and cut your throat. Right. Yeah. And who can I mean, like, it's kind of he's kind of more of a dick because he can make you he can he, he can really convince you that everything's cool. Yeah, we're good. man. Don't worry about that. And he makes jokes at his own expense and he laughs and he has a warm smile. And then inside he's like, I will kill you tonight. Yeah, But he's you just, know? he just crafted this ultimate persona of just convincing everyone. Like, like you said, like if at that moment we're not I'm not a threat to you. I'm your friend. Our buddies. Let's go out. We're cool. I'm your friend. Daniel. And then the next minute, you know, you're fucking on your back, you know, getting fucking put into the gulag. That's <laughs> comrade have another glass of wine yeah, yeah. your last glass bitch yep. <laughs> all right so the next question um who'd win in a fist fight this is uh, i don't know man i mean i'm glad you made categories for these cause... i mean five 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 nine so hitler's probably got a reach advantage that's not only one. that but he was a soldier you know what I mean? He was in yeah. World War One, in the shit. So here he is as a soldier, by right. the way. They were both soldiers, though, I think. No. No, they weren't? No. Stalin no. was not a Stalin soldier. Stalin was never a soldier. Well, okay. he was a revolutionary. Right. So Hitler was a small man. He's 5'9". It's unknown how tough he was. Uh, he did serve as a lance corporal in the Bavarian army. He did see combat. Um, it's unclear if any of that combat was hand-to-hand, though. So we don't know if he actually had to scrap, like if he had a battle in the trenches sure. with somebody or something. In, in the terms of a fist fight, that matters. But like just right. taking bullets in the trenches at this time took yeah. a certain type of person. Oh, sure. So he was definitely a hard enough motherfucker to be in there. Right. Now, it is worth noting that Hitler actually got rejected from the military previous to serving in the Bavarian army for not being, you know, a, a, a physically fit enough specimen to join. So, okay. So he was a little bit shrimpy, even for the time and place, and a little bit on the unhealthy side, at least in the evaluation of the uh, Australian uh, Austrian army. Yeah, I mean, he Australians? wouldn't be the first. The Australian he, army. He he be put the another first. shrimp on the bobby. He was like Rudy, dude. Yeah. Rudy. So, remember? And nobody <laughs> yeah. thought Rudy. <laughs> Hitler was like Rudy. Denny, yeah. point, Paul. But you know what? Then he does. Then he does. And then they were all like, Rudy. And he did it. Hitler. 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 It's the same Hitler. thing. Hitler, he ran over that hill. Oh, he did it. Oh, he did right. it. So anyway, so uh, it's an, it's also worth noting that uh, in the early days of the Nazi Party, um, Germany was a very volatile political environment, and uh, a lot of these little political factions were known for brawling with one another. 
and for staging events that, you know, turned into ball. But it's basically the same way like Antifa right. and fucking uh, Proud Boys duke it out in the streets. That was pretty common. Dust it up, yeah. You know? Uh, there was these, there was dust ups and there was brawls and there was fights. So it's kind of unlikely that Hitler would would have been totally spared that. No, it's unlikely he would have been able to rise through the ranks if it was known that like he's a pussy in a fight. Right. When that's so important to the pol- you know, to especially like a group like the fucking, uh, you know, I forget what it was called before it was called the Nazis, but you know what I'm talking about. So I don't. But I let me. I'll just say this though. I don't. I was unable to find any. One specific instance of a story of Hitler in a fist fight. I was never, I was never, I mean, like, it seems likely he was in them based on the fact that he was at war, based on the fact that he was part of a political party that was known for fighting. Well, I know why. Because the other guy never lived to tell the fucking tale, dude. Oh, shit. Dead men do tell no tales. You know what I mean? Oh, snap. You know where I learned that? From the crossbones and skull on the fucking yep on the ride. Dude. So how about the how about Joe Stalin here? I don't know. What, what do we know? Now about he was even more diminutive in stature than Hitler. Yeah, I mean, just because you're small doesn't mean five, you're weak. At five five, so basically they're in the same fucking weight class. So no one has a weight class advantage. They're both flyweights. Yeah, featherweights. Featherweight, flyweight, somewhere around there. In his early days, he lived as an outlaw. That's now he was involved in some bank robberies. Okay. He was involved in some kidnappings. He was involved in some assassinations. But more on the planning side of that. I don't think he actually was the assassin or anything. Uh, but he did He did plan out some bank robberies and uh, you know participate in them. Uh, so that kind of speaks to, I think, a certain level of toughness and risk-taking and shit like that. Uh, he also spent some time in Siberian prison. Damn. Which, uh, you know... Tough place to do time. Siberian man. prison doesn't. I mean, that doesn't sound like an easy fucking place. Yeah, to be. it sounds like the last place you want to be sent. Well, where might we do our time? Siberia. <laughs> it sounds <laughs> like a place that might turn you into a pretty hard motherfucker. So it's difficult to imagine that he didn't know a little something about violence. Uh, if he went to a Russian prison, yeah, I think he did. However, yeah. once again, I can't find any specific story about him ever getting into a fist fight with I mean, anybody it, at any at, time. At the point that they reached national status and, you know, household name status. Right. Wouldn't it behoove them not to have fist fight stories floating around? It doesn't, like, I, I don't know. Especially if they have their ass kicked at any point. Well, yeah. But just, just in terms of how it, like, you know, uh, it kind of, like, douses the nobility of their fucking position. Right. To, to, to talk about how they were scrapping in the streets or whatever the fuck. Uh, so basically for this one, we're really going to have to kind of use our imagination on it. Um, I don't I don't think as much imagination is required. I mean, look, if, if fucking Stalin was in a Russian prison, if he lived life as an outlaw, there's no way he did that without getting in a fist fight or two. And no way he did that without being able to beat up most of the people that he had <laughs> to get in front of. And I kind of feel the same way about Hitler, honestly. I, right. I mean, both of these guys, look, I think it's pretty likely that both of these guys were in a number of scraps. <laughs> if you were and in... I, think it's I mean, it's going to be fucking, tough to make it to I think the it's fucking pretty, top, look, dude. I mean, Hitler... To speak to Hitler's toughness as a person, Hitler, after getting a, a, an injury at war that basically blinded him temporarily, was like... He wasn't like, oh, I better milk this for as long as I can. He was itching to get back there on the battlefield and fucking get some revenge on the motherfuckers that wronged him. So... You know, Hitler was not uh, a coward in that regard. Stalin, it doesn't sound like, was either. Uh, even though he did live in fear of a lot of threats, it never paralyzed him. Uh, so I think both these guys probably grew up pretty hard, life on the streets kind of bullshit, you know? At least more than any of us is used oh, to Oh, way have more than us. Right. I mean, I mean like, we're, we're fucking soft, doughy motherfuckers, uh, especially in comparison. Now, I got to I, I I do think I know which way I'm drifting on this one as I think about it cuz really we're just going to have to imagine. Right. There's this is purely like they have similar pedigrees. It's a similar fucking story with both of them. Uh so it's really just down to you look at these two men and what you know about them and you think to yourself who's going to fucking win this fucking well, fight. Well, here's here's something that I just know and this is anecdotal, but from my life experience, it sounds like Adolf Hitler was more of a tea kettle in terms of anger. Yes. 
And in my experience, those dudes most likely are not going to win a whole lot of fights against quieter guys. You know what I mean? Right. Sounds like Stalin was a way way less uh, likely to have those types of outbursts, and that to to me makes him scarier. So you think that Stalin basically? When, I think if it when came to that with when Stalin, Hitler's losing his shit and getting emotional, Stalin's going to be still there. Calm, like, he was in prison. Calm, yeah. calm cool, right. collected. Right. Buy at this time, finds their opening, not Hitler on his ass. You dude. know, especially if we're talking about them at the <clears throat> height of their power, having to have a fist fight. You know right. what I mean? I'm assuming I'm, when I say they're having a fist fight, I'm assuming that it's them. Yeah, like as dictators, right at the when, height of their dictatorial power. Right, doing they're battle going mano a mano. No fucking weapons, no dirty tricks, no bullshit. Just a stand up. I punch you, you punch me until one of us goes down. Right, but I mean Hitler. You That's know, what we're looking at. Being four, like four or five inches taller. He probably had a reach advantage on Stalin. So that's I mean, true. If he pops Stalin at the right moment, that could be. The and end. I mean, look, sometimes that explosive anger can compromise your cleverness in a fight, but sometimes it can also enhance your boldness in a fight. So I mean, yeah, like you over overwhelm your opponent. I, I just think Stalin, you know, slow and steady wins the race. I think Stalin would have been the most, the more patient of the two. I think Stalin, but not so much for the same reason that you give. What do you think? I was thinking Stalin simply because. Even though he might be shorter, he looks a fuck. He just looks stockier. He looks better built. Yeah, that is true. I just feel like he's ultimately going to fuck. I think Hitler is just too slight. He's a narrow guy. Um, yeah. I, I really just see Stalin kind of manhandling him. I mean, I don't know if it would be a total manhandle, but if I'm going to have to make this fucking yeah. wild, I'm, yeah. I'm going on Stalin on this one. I just think he would probably, at the end man. of the day, beat the shit and out Russians, of fucking. And Russians are known for being pretty fucking Adolf. tough, man, and having that toughness and going Siberian to, prison. That's so what I'm check saying. it out, dude. Stalin's starting to sweep some categories here. He's yeah. charging up the backstretch. So you vote for Stalin as well, Scotty? Yeah, I have to vote for Stalin, man. I think I could see Hitler winning, but I would if I had to bet. Looking at the two, I'd put my money on Stalin. So the next question is: Who was smarter? Who was so smart? Who, who was had, smarter? Who oh, was smarter? My little Stalin is way smarter than little Hitler. Hitler. That's true. Hitler. We'll get to that in a second. All right. This is Hitler. He's reading a newspaper. He's smart. Smarter. Smarter. Done. Guy. Smarter. Done. <laughs> Vote for Hitler. Come on. Reading the newspaper and smiling. Yep. You know? Smart. Not only is he reading the newspaper, he's understanding, he's comprehending, he's emotionally reacting to what he's reading. Yep. Smart man. Smart. So Hitler's intelligence seemed to be sort of a controversial matter. I guess when it comes to Hitler, a lot of things are controversial. Like, he just kind of breeds that. So some of the people who say Hitler's an idiot kind of point to some of his uh, crazier, zanier beliefs like astrology and some other mysticism. Well, that doesn't necessarily make you stupid. Yeah, I agree. And I think those I think people. those beliefs are stupid, but I don't think a, I don't think that a person believing those things makes them stupid. Um, others point to his numerous military blunders, the worst of which was probably the extremely ill-advised invasion of the Soviet Union, by the way. Um, and, uh, you know, I think that there's also a certain stupidity involved in. Never realizing like, hey, I keep making mistakes, maybe I'm not good at this, you know? Yeah, sure. Like, I think stubbornness is a form of stupidity. But I don't think we can ignore the fact that he was perhaps the most talented manipulator of human beings on a mass psychological level, level to ever exist. He's a contender for that title. I don't I don't think you could possibly no. argue that and he wasn't. This just speaks to, like, kind of how intelligence has been dumbed down to book smarts. Right, exactly. There's different kinds of intelligence. People express different aptitudes and different areas of intelligence that are not as easy to quantify as he he was not a good speaker. That doesn't mean he's not incredibly intelligent. No, he, been, so he was an, I mean, like, Hitler, but obviously. Hitler was an amazing speaker. He was obviously an amazing speaker. He was an amazing showman. He understood crowd psychology. He knew exactly where his people were. He read extent. I mean, like Hitler was an extensive reader. Uh, he read extensively about. So he had book smarts too. He re obviously wrote a book on his own. It's not the greatest book of all time. Sure. I mean, even if you take aside the fact that it was written by Hitler, it's just not that great of a book. But it's a fucking book. You know, a lot of <laughs> a lot of people can't write a fucking book. Let's be real. Right. Uh, 
And I mean, look, he was able to take a country with a beaten down populace that was basically in despair, an economy that was in the fucking toilet. I mean, really? That was fucking, it was like in, in a state of hyperinflation. Yeah, I've read stories like something like, you know, at, at breakfast, it'd be two million marks for a loaf of bread, and by dinner, it'd be a three million. Right. The, the, it was the, just crazy shit like that. People couldn't feed themselves. They're inflation using- was insane. The economy was destroyed. In, the Most of the infrastructure of the country was fucked. The citizenry was in despair. He turned that into a bunch of confident, loyal subjects who quickly and efficiently not only restored the infrastructure they had, but began a meteoric buildup of military power and technology. Uh, Hitler used Keynesian economics, a lot of public works projects and things of that nature to fucking boost his economy back into shape. And within a, within an amount of time, that's just insane. Like think of like, think about how bad the economy is in America. You know, I mean like whatever they say about the stock market and shit, we all know the the lower end. We all know the fucking truth in this country. Basically take something that's way worse than where we are now and bring it to something that's way better than where we are now. In a few years. In a, just a few years. Yeah. I mean, it, it, it and can't it's because, be understated. It's because, he got, he, it's because he had a vision for exactly what everyone should be doing, and he was able to convince an entire country full of people to follow him his vision. There's a reason why he was able to convince them to go to well, war. Well, Germans had such a Because high... up until then, domestically... I mean, obviously, he was a racist and a bigot and a horrible fucking person in a billion ways, but that didn't that doesn't mean he didn't have some fucking good ideas about how to fucking get his country back into fucking gear. If he started, didn't, he wouldn't have been able to take over the amount of land and fucking uh, seize the amount of power that he was able to. Well, he also did a lot of things like he restored a lot of pride into Germany because after the you know the Treaty of Versailles, you know, after the defeat in World Which War One, which was meant and designed to humiliate Germany, I think, it was. I, I think that that's if why you're gonna, the hyperinflation occurred too. If you're going to look at all these good things that he did for for Germany, almost all of them seem to be rooted in empathy, and I think that there's an empathetic intelligence that people don't understand. I think that Hitler understood how people thought in a way that is rare. And I think that he was able to communicate that image and the image of him and his speeches and his person to person kind of handshaking, glad handing image. And the grand scale, which the Third Reich presented propaganda with. You see like these meetings. It wasn't just like, hey, here's the fucking thing. We're all meeting. It was like a giant eagle looms over the crowd. You well, know, he Hitler. capitalized on how everybody was feeling, because like we said before, in three years, he had taken them from utter destitution and starvation to a, a, a competing economy again. And the propaganda they put out, I mean, like, German filmmakers at the time were some of the world's leading filmmakers in the 20s and 30s. So, I right. mean, German cinema was important. German technology was way ahead of, of any other nation at that time, too. Like, they were developing oh, the V1 and T- V2 rockets. Another thing, well, Hitler, you can also thank him for that. Because Hitler actually placed a tremendous amount of por- importance in developing those technologies. Uh, we'll get into some of that later. So, um, he was also, on top of that, a student of architecture of art, and of German literature. Uh, You can also see here that he surrounded himself. uh, It seems like it was pretty customary for a lot of people back then to take these IQ tests. Hitler never did, but he surrounded himself with people whose IQs are known. And, uh, you know, they're all in the 120s, 130s. It's pretty Uh, high. So he surrounded himself with extremely intelligent people. Um. And here's some of their impressions of him. Here's the dude, uh, Funk, IQ 124. I immediately... Oh, by the way, this should. there's a disclaimer to this that should definitely be said. This was all during the uh, like the Nuremberg trials and these dudes being tried for war crimes. So they were trying to... So they buy... They were, so basically, the defendants continually, continuously uh, emphasized Hitler's unassailable authority as an element in their defense saying, in effect, that the Fuhrer was the whole show and they had little to no influence, thereby mitigating their own guilt. Right. So they have a vested interest in saying some of this stuff, so keep that in mind. Yeah, he's a genius. I immediately received the impression of an exceptional personality. He grasped all problems with lightning speed and knew how to present them very impressively with great fluency and highly expressive gestures. So let's see, who's the highest IQ on this? This is 143 guy. Shocked. He read an enormous amount and acquired wide knowledge. He juggled with the knowledge in a masterly manner in all debates, discussions, and speeches. He was undoubtedly a man of 
genius in certain respects. He had sudden ideas of which nobody else had thought and which were at times useful in solving great difficulties, sometimes with astounding simplicity, sometimes, however, with equally astounding brutality. He was a mass psychologist of really diabolical genius. I believe that originally he was not filled only with evil desires. Originally, no doubt, he believed he was aiming at good, but gradually he himself fell victim to the same spell which he exercised over the masses. He was a man of unbending energy and of a willpower which overcame all obstacles. Only those two characteristics, mass psychology and his energy and willpower, explain that Hitler was able to rally up to 40% and later almost 50% of the German people behind him. And a, a lot more than that once he took power, sure. of course. Um, <clears throat> so I think it's pretty hard to say that Hitler was stupid. I don't think a bumbling think that, moron could have positioned themselves no, like this. No, I think you that have to. Make any sense. You obviously that does. I mean, I think some people, they just want everything about Hitler to just be completely fucking bad and negative. And no, he, he was, was an, an idiot. idiot and uh, he's all the bad he things. He stumbled his way into power. And, you know, it's like, come on. No, that wasn't the case. He was a diabolical genius intellect who, yeah, he did some stupid things. He was not the military mind that he fancied himself to be. And uh, he might have had some silly beliefs here and there. He had failings and faults like any other person. But I mean, but, I mean to but, say that he that he did, he wasn't a pretty brilliant human being is kind of just silly. It and uh, it's not giving you're not giving the devil his due at that point. So Joseph Stalin, what about him? Was he a fucking moron? <laughs> no. There, like once again, just on the face of it, there's no way that he attained the position that he attained and was capable of carrying out these complex plots over years and years and years. Um, I, I just can't see once again a moron being established. Yeah, head the, of the Soviet Union for thirty years. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, President Harry Truman once described Stalin as smart as hell. Stalin was a voracious reader from an early age, devouring the classics of European literature alongside the canonical text of the socialist movement. He was educated in a seminary, but found his true meteor in the radical bookshops of the Georgian capital, uh, Tbilisi. Hope I'm pronouncing that somewhere in the range of right. Stalin believed in the power of words for the simple reason that reading books changed his life and guided him to the revolutionary underground in Tsarist Russia. Although his uh, peripatetic lifestyle meant Stalin did not begin to collect books and build a personal library until after the Re Russian Revolution, by the time of his death in 1953, he had amassed a collection of some 25,000 volumes. Ooh. In 1925, Stalin drew up a grandiose plan for the classification of his books. He envisioned a library that would contain a diverse store of human knowledge, not just the humanities and social sciences, but aesthetics, fiction, and natural sciences. After Stalin's death, the majority of his books were dispersed to other libraries, but a few thousand volumes that survived in the official Russian archives provide an intriguing lens with which uh, to view Stalin's private thinking. Above all, Stalin's annotations of his library books show that he was indeed a true believer in his ideology. The most important thing is Marxism, Stalin scribbled in the margin in a, in an, of an obscure Soviet military journal, and he meant it. In the thousands upon thousands of annotated pages in Stalin's library books, there is not a hint he harbored any doubt whatsoever about the communist cause. Um, it's also worth noting, by the way, that, um, you know, these books were not for decoration. This wasn't to, uh, you know, for vanity or to show off yeah, how smart how, he was. Yeah, I'm, I'm super smart. Stalin literally spent hours and hours every day with these books, reading, learning, absorbing new knowledge, uh, writing his thoughts in the fucking, you know, uh, margins and things of that nature. It's completely voracious reader, um, was always interested in understanding things uh, more deeply, gaining new information, um, just ha as, and as, as was, we've noted earlier in the episode, a tr tremendously powerful memory. Yeah. Um, he was very capable of memorizing information. Um, so he, 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 what he read, he retained a lot of. Um, he was also an amateur uh, linguistician, uh, which uh, he actually published an article in uh, Pravda on June 20th with the title Marxism and the Problems of Linguistics. So he actually uh, participated in intellectual discussions in his country. Um, 
and you know made his opinions known and would champion certain science and uh, not always the science he necessarily believed in. He actually he actually would champion scientists that were. <laughs> politically advantageous for him to champion when in private he thought they were idiots and that their research was bunk. Um, so not above uh, some startling dishonesty, but he wanted to make sure that he possessed uh, as much knowledge as possible. So aside from his book smarts, he was also uh, ruthlessly cunning, of course. Uh, he consistently outsmarted those who everyone else kind of on the outside looking in thought were his superiors. Trotsky comes to mind. In fact, he would often play dumb just to be underestimated, uh, which is probably one of the most cunning maneuvers you can possibly pull off. Yeah. You know, why show your true intelligence to your enemy uh, until it's too late for them to stop you? Um, so much more of a book smart guy. Um, also capable of uh, some manipulation of people, obviously a master of deceit. Not quite as much a master as Hitler was. Um, didn't have the soaring oratory or the quite as comprehensive, instinctive uh, understanding of mass psychology, but obviously a guy who is very good at assimilating information and also very good at applying the information that he assimilates to the world around him, obviously, as well as being ruthlessly cunning, deceptive, able to make long, super long-term strate uh, strategies and implement them. Um, so it's kind of hard to argue that he's any kind of slouch either. Yeah. Kind of different kinds of intelligence once again. Yeah. So really kind of a tough call here, honestly. Yeah, a lot of this has been super tough. It's a lot. Well, Paul came in here earlier and he asked me, you know, who's going to win? And I told him, I don't know. And he's like, bullshit. Every time I've ever done one of these, I know who's going to win. Yeah. I, I really didn't. And I think you're probably starting to see why I didn't know who was going to win. Hmm. Um, I mean... I would probably. Scotty, I vote, don't think you've thrown out the first. Uh, I, vote I, yet. I would probably vote for Hitler, and I'll tell you why. I think as I think that even if Joseph Stalin had this incredible linguistic skill and it was a voracious reader, Russian culture has not really ever been thought of as like a super intelligent culture. You know what I mean? It's never been like the lead. wow. It really wow. hasn't racist against the Russian yeah. people, yeah. but. If you're talking about Ger the Germany, I mean, they invented some crazy We're not things. so good at thinking, comrade. We just stupid Russia. Well, we don't understand. Well, they never had, they never had an enlightenment. Right, sure. So, I mean, they're, they're actually at a, uh, a major disadvantage with Western Europe. I felt like the German culture is really one of intellectual pride, and I think the fact that they had such great inventions and such things that, I mean, it was more of an intellectual culture. And to rise to the top of that culture, I think, probably takes a little bit more intellect. And, you know, the Hitler obviously surrounded himself with very intelligent people, whereas Stalin really just probably couldn't afford to do that. So I think overall, even though Stalin was more successful within his system, and obviously with longevity, it just seems to me that Hitler is probably a little bit smarter in his understanding of the culture and uh, what he needed to do to be a leader. Um... I'm uh, man. I'm just going all my votes tonight for uh, Stalin, but I, I'm gonna have to give it to Stalin, just Fair because uh, I think that you know from what we've learned about Hitler tonight, he allowed his temper and his uh, kind of delusions of grandeur about himself to overextend himself in ways that ended up losing everything that he gained. Um. You know, in ter especially in terms of overextending his military and shit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he did make some pretty bad military and blunders. But by I mean, the way, Stalin but look, sat back and reaped the benefits of that. But look, but we think about this geopolitically speaking. The German military was so strong that it really took basically the Russian military was not great. It just was basically a meat grinder. Right. And the Germans ground the. Uh, I mean, and they very nearly lost the war themselves. And they were also fighting against other countries as well. I mean, I think that. You know, well, well, yeah, you can give points to Russia. I mean, Stalin was not necessarily a brilliant military leader either, and he was very nearly defeated. And if it hadn't been for two, multiple fronts, he would have been, undoubtedly. I mean, Hitler marched his troops into a Siberian winter or whatever, a fucking Russian... Well, the campaign, the way that started was that they were supposed to do it before, but obviously the problem was Mussolini couldn't actually it was, he was obviously a Hitler's puppet. Right. He couldn't control Italy, so he had to, that basically was delayed. So if it hadn't been quicker... And they came within, about, I think, 50 to 100 miles of Moscow. So they're still, even with that, even with the winter, they very nearly lost. I mean, the problem is that Hitler and Stalin had signed a 10-year non-aggression pact, which Hitler broke the pact. Right. Which was just fucking... Doesn't make it's any one sense. Of the great, it's one of the biggest blunders in all oh, of yeah. history. I oh, mean, 100%. If we're honest. Um, 
That being said, I still got to give it to Hitler because I just feel like Hitler's understanding of mass psychology rises to the level not just of genius but super genius. I think I've got to give it to Hitler, T.J. Kirk. Yep, there you go. <laughs> I've got to give it. Got to give it to Hitler. I'm just. I just think that like you yeah, know, T.J. You look, do. Stalin was mu- <laughs> had a much more well rounded intellect, but Hitler's intelligence in the area where he truly shined was just so incredible that I feel like I have to give it to him because he's just in that understanding of mass psychology. Like if he would have applied that for good, I think that we would have a better understanding of discretion of is the better part of valor, dude. That's an intelligent way to live your life. And I think it could be argued much more than Hitler that that's how Stalin lived his life at the top, at least. Sure. I can see that point, but I don't agree. Yeah, there's good points for sure. Hitler wins. Hitler wins. But, well, it's, it's, but it's a close it's a close race. It was definitely hard. Uh, so the next question is, who was the better leader? Two I, different management styles, too. Right. So and the we talked re- about the incredible gains that Germany had. I mean, uh, well, OK, so this is more what, what Russia what happened to Russia. When I ask time. this question, what I'm really asking is, what did they achieve? Right. Good, bad, whatever. The question is not about whether what they whether or not they did with power is good or meets with my approval. The question is, what did they accomplish with the power that they accrued? Because I think it's well, both pre- quite a bit. Someone who doesn't do anything with power to me is fucking lame. And there's definitely people who want power just so they can wear it like a fucking badge or something. Neither of these guys is like that. They wanted power because they wanted to achieve very particular well, use fucking sets of goals and use that power to radically transform their respective societies. So let's take a look at what the fuck they did. And we're going to start with uh, with Hitler. Let me just see if I can find the right picture here. All right. No, I can't. <laughs> nope. Not nope. It. Nope. Can't do it. All right. Error. Error. We'll be back to the Hitler. Error. Stashless pictures. Hitler pictures again. Beautiful. It's because I keep having to go back to this document, so it's like disrupting the flow of shit. Good job, TJ. Should have pulled your image just like I do. I did, but... Oh, man, TJ. Sad. Here. Fine. So sad, TJ. Error. Error. All right. So we're back on Come track on, here. Shut up. Where TJ? Where the rest of it go? Whatever. I'll get to that in a second. So, what did Hitler do? So, his ambition and power uh, sped up technological development in all areas, particularly nuclear research, uh, jet engines, rockets, and medicine. So, he made major investments in technology. Smart move and <clears throat> ultimately helped the Germans' position for a while, at least. Hitler restored the German economy and brought the nation to full employment. He practiced Keynesian economic theory, which is basically deficit spending to fund large public works projects and infuse capital into the economy. Very successful. Uh, Introduced the Volkswagen, designed by Hitler as the German equivalent to the Model T. It was meant to allow everyday Germans the chance to uh, for car ownership, because obviously a lot of them didn't own cars at that time. Uh, He ended the civil wars that were plaguing the, uh, the Weimar Republic. In 10 years, he turned Germany from a defeated, disorganized, impoverished collection of principalities into a unified nation that boasted the strongest ground and air military force on Earth, one of the strongest economies, and one of the most efficient and productive industrial bases uh, as a nation. 10 years. And that even really still endures today in Germany. Uh, Nearly exterminated the Jewish people. I mean, he also nearly fucking destroyed his country. Oh, yes. He pretty much did. Yeah, ultimately, he, yeah. Ultimately, yes. <laughs> Literally left it at the mercy of two opposing superpowers for generations. So, Obvi- Yeah, obviously. Um, so he nearly exterminated the Jewish people, killing about six million of them. Uh, not to mention his uh, impressive... Closed window, yes, I'm sure. Starting the his, largest conflict in the, in the His history. impressive military uh, campaigns, which this is the Weimar Republic here. This is what Hitler started with. And even this is rife with civil war and conflict. He was able to unify that and expand it into this. Pretty fucking uh, impressive by any, any measure. Right. But as Paul said, he did ultimately lead his country to ruin. Because oh, he, total ruin. he fought a war on too many fronts. 
and he overestimated the might of his admittedly impressive military. And uh, he started some fights that other people uh, uh, finished and lost all of this territory. And his country ended up being split in two for uh, a long time afterwards um, and uh, became one of the most vilified and hated men in history, obviously. So you definitely have to, uh, to take that into consideration. But prior to that, it seemed like everything was going pretty good for old Hitler. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I mean, before World War II, I mean, it's, I mean, he totally turns the society around. It's like a slumping society. People are poor. People can't afford basic necessities. And suddenly it's a, it's a, te- a technological wonder of the world. The strongest military, the strongest air force, the strongest almost everything, the strongest industries. Yeah. So. In a matter of, in a matter of a decade. Right. I mean, that's, I mean I, it's like, it's unimaginable at this yeah. point. Your sphere of influence doesn't increase to this extent if you're not a good leader. There's no way. So let's look at some of the uh, accomplishments of Joseph Stalin according to this website, which I don't know what this website's sure. affiliations are, so <laughs> you can take this with a probably a giant grain of salt. Um, the name Joseph Stalin evokes varied emotions, blah, 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 blah. Uh, so there's all that shit. So here's the achievements. Uh, One of the biggest achievements of Stalin was the massive industrialization of Russia. He believed that Russia was capable of becoming uh, one of the dominant players in the world economy. He introduced the policy of collectivized agriculture, due to which land was taken away from peasants, reducing them to the status of serfs again. Although Stalin was widely criticized for this policy, it created an agricultural boom in Russia. Another important achievement of Stalin was the institution of five-year... Plans to improve the state of uh, Russia's economy. Stalin encouraged heavy materials industry to give Russia an edge over other capitalist countries. It is believed that the annual growth rate of Russia under Stalin's rule was close to about 13% due to rapid industrialization. New products were developed in Russian society, uh, which was predominantly agrarian, turned into an yeah, industrially I mean, advanced society. You've seen those growth rates now in uh, developing countries, too. So it just sounds like Russia went from a developing country to an industrialized country. Yes. So, I mean, that sounds like it's pretty Under much Under Stalin's normal. leadership. Well, Stalin once said that, uh, Stalin once said, my country is about 50 or 60 years behind, and we have 10 years to make up the difference. He was pretty much right. Uh, under Stalin, health care and education received a tremendous boost. Stalin promoted girls' education. Women were treated fairly and given equal employment opportunities. The literacy rate increased to a record high under Stalin, and many young people had easy access to university education. Advancement in the field of health care increased the average lifespan of Russians, and most of the Russians had universal access to hospitals and medicine. The prevalence of some dreaded diseases of those times, like cholera and malaria, dropped to record low numbers. Overall, health care and education received great boost under Stalin. Uh, Stalin was a Georgian by birth, but he promoted Russian art, history, and literature. He spoke highly about the Russian... Well, I mean, he's the leader of fucking Russia. Right. He's not Yeah, gonna, he's not going to be like, Russia sucks. It's kind of weird that both of our uh, our, our uh, subjects tonight were not born in the country that they yeah. ultimately ended yeah, up ruling. Yeah, they're obviously born the in Austria, yeah. Uh, One of the biggest achievements of Stalin was his role in stopping Hitler from annexing parts of Russia. Stalin and Hitler had a pact under which Poland was to be divided between Russia and Germany. Sucks if you're Poland. (laughs) Yeah, and neither of them would meddle in each other's affairs. Hitler broke the pact by launching Operation Barbosa. Although the Soviet forces suffered heavy casualties in the initial phase of the war, Stalin took the command of the army and was successful in stopping the German army from annexing Soviet territories. He was named Person of the Year by the reputed Time magazine. After the world after World War II was over, Stalin, along with Franklin D. Roosevelt and Winston Churchill, became prominent political figures in the world. Stalin also played an important role in getting a permanent seat for Russia in the United Nations Security Council. And we, and we know that's so important now because Russia, all the time, and the United States does this too, will veto bans in the UN Security Council, which only the original members of that council, by the way, get that uh, ability. Right. Uh, There's no doubt that Stalin was a controversial figure, and the methods he employed for making Russia an advanced country have been subject of immense criticism. He has been held responsible for the Soviet famine of 1932 and 33, in which millions of people lost their lives. Although Stalin committed grave atrocities, his role in making the Soviet Union one of the most powerful nations in the world can't be undermined. We would like to uh, end this article by remembering Stalin's wartime slogan, Die, but do not retreat. Oh. Damn, zombies? <laughs> yeah, dude. <sighs> he was he endorsed the zombie way of thinking. Got it. 
I mean, so some of these things, like the five-year plan, that those the kind of things led to these famines and kicking people off the land that were even farming land also led to these famines. Some of these policies, but can't make an omelet out breaking yeah, few ways, that's what boy. Gonna say, I know you're gonna say that. It's like you know, can't make omelet. I challenge you, make me an omelet without breaking few eggs. How about some? Mil- how about millions of eggs? Millions of eggs that happen to be human skulls. Hmm. Um, so there's also I don't know I thought I pulled it, but let me just uh. This is fun. There is a. Or maybe I pulled that for a different section. Let me see. Hold on. Let me check something real quick. So, did you pull anything about the the end of Stalin's life? How how was he doing politically towards the end of all of this? So, all this seems to become like the front end, or you know, over maybe 10, 20 years. You know, I what, mean, what about the end? Of, was, was he still? Did he? Uh, have, it's it, widely believed that Stalin was probably poisoned. Okay, so Stalin was removed from power at that point. Um, it's not 100% confirmed that he was poisoned, but yeah, I mean, like, look, uh, he maintained power till his dying day. He maintained power for a lot longer than Hitler did. Well, a lot longer than you would expect in a, in a cutthroat as, uh, you know, basically a society you know, and political uh, state as the Soviet Union was. You know, people were definitely gunning for him uh, all the way through. Um, it's kind of hard one to judge uh, because, you know, Hitler's... Uh, Amazing turnaround of Germany in such a short time. The clarity of rebuilding a total economy from like dog shit. I mean, Russia, but Russia had to do the same thing too. Yeah, I mean, they both war- had to do the same thing after but, war- after World War Two. But I mean, yeah, obviously Stalin had way more time. Hitler to do was that. way better at that part, but Stalin didn't then go piss it away by getting involved in a bunch of fucking military expansionist bullshit that just ultimately ended up leading to the destruction right, of yeah. the he was able to he was able to oversee the expansion of that kind of power and in his country it. without provoking a geopolitical response that ultimately tore his country to pieces right i mean u- i mean ultimately i mean he created he took a country that no one thought of that no one would ever think of as a superpower and turned, turned it into it a into fucking a superpower if, if you look at the speed with with, with, with you know and, and the achievements of Nazi Germany, I mean, it, it, that would be hard, but the end result being that the total destruction of that society and having to be totally rebuilt and the infrastructure has to be rebuilt and basically being a, a puppet of two other superpowers, you think you have to argue that Stalin was probably the better fucking leader. I mean, certainly I mean, within his lifetime. Of I course, mean, yeah. it took a while for Stalin's, uh, you know, uh, kind of established order to rot out from under Russia. Right. I feel like, once again, if Hitler had died in like 1938-ish or so, it, this would be no a no brainer, definitely be. But like the fact that is that when you look at the totality of their time and power, who left their country in a better position? And there's no questioning who was at fault for Hitler's defeat. Right. I mean, we we've learned yeah. that he was notoriously dismissive of his more you know his military commanders, and he made some really really fucking beyond questionable oh, dude, military th- decisions. There, were, there was times uh, in New Orleans we have the World War II Museum that some of Hitler's top generals were just like, no, Hitler's an idiot, I'm not doing that. Because they knew it in a sense like he was wrong. And he right. was he made so many blunders militarily. But I think, you know, just looking at the end result of it, Stalin was in power and the Soviet Union's power only grew under his rule. So I don't know. I think it's a pretty much a no-brainer. You have to say that Stalin was overall the better leader. Yeah. Yep. I mean, part of being a good leader is keeping the people that you lead alive and cohesive. And, yes. You know. And uh, did some people die? Yeah, but overall, the population of the country continued going up. And uh, he turned it from an agrarian base to an industrial base. And he turned it from a nothing, a backwoods, into a fucking global superpower. And, I mean, and it still is. To this day. It's not the Soviet Union anymore, and, but it's still a superpower. And he's largely responsible for the foundation of that. So, right. I mean, it's hard to argue that and, he's uh, not the better Putin, leader. by the way, Putin used to talk shit on Stalin, but now actually, uh, it, these days, talks respectfully of Stalin. Yeah, he's so. like, wait a minute. <laughs> that's calculated. I mean, I'll tell you what, there hasn't been a leader that's been more like Stalin uh, in Russia then since. Putin. Yeah, so, uh, Stalin, then Putin. I mean, <laughs> they're, they're very, very similar. Um. So... The next question is, who had the higher kill count? So what are we counting here? Are we talking about people that died as an indirect result of your policies? So you made a policy well, and somebody starved because of it. Or so are you talking about, you, you hey, I rounded war. you up and I, and I, you know, I took the action to end your life directly with a bullet. <laughs> so that's something that we're going to have to fucking figure out. That's really the crux of this. I would say... Anything that the state would be ordered to carry out, like, so wars, concentration camps, you know, bad state policies, like, oh, it must led to a famine. 
I think you have to look at what the actions of the state or what the decision of that leader is that ultimately impacts them either directly or indirectly. So depending on how you count, I mean, like you can get all kinds of different numbers depending on how you decide to count this shit. So you can say 4.9 to 6.2 million Jews killed yes, yep. in the Holocaust. How many other casualties for other countries suffered fighting the You could the talk about 7.4 to 17 million uh, killed by uh, General Plan Ost and Hunger Plan. You could talk about 2.47 uh, to 11.1 non-Jewish and Roma Soviet civilians killed by Hitler. Wow, that's crazy. Uh, or his policies or his armies or whatever. 500,000 died from the bombing of Soviet citizens alone, by the way. 3.1 to 3.3 million non-Jewish Soviet POWs killed by Nazis. 1.8 to 2.7 Poles and uh, other non-Jews killed by Nazis in Poland. 130,000 to 500,000 killed in Porozhmos. I mean, with the fact that... With Hit- one, one fourth of the entire Roma population. I think you have to ask, too. I mean, Hitler is kind of the catalyst, and the Nazi Germany is behind World War right. II. So if you... In- I if- mean, if you're... Ma- if you're and, and to say if that's the directive... So if, if, if Hitler is if you blame, if you If you decide to blame Hitler for the deaths during World War II, which killed 70 to 80 million people, it's hard including to it's 48 Hitler, to 58 million civilians... Um, then, but you know, there's also you have to consider that Japan was also some, part, part un, un, right. under Hitler's uh, influence, right? Well, it well, was allied with Hitler. It was kind of a sort of a loose alliance sure. they had going on, and actually, Japan kind of inspired Hitler because their racially homogenous views kind of mirrored his own. Sure, and and their success. Too, so three course. to thirty million of those were killed by the Japanese, who arguably started the war before Hitler during the invasion of Manchuria. China. So you could, yeah. So you could fucking, uh, you could fucking make a case. Maybe Japan is the one who's really responsible for World War II and Hitler. But I mean, obviously Hitler bears a tremendous responsibility as well. So maybe you attribute some of those deaths to him. Yeah. Maybe you attribute half of those deaths or a quarter of those deaths. Or, or you, you could say the deaths well, in maybe, Europe. Yeah. You know, maybe you could say we well, could you could fucking say, well, you know, if people had just peaceably surrendered to Hitler, there wouldn't have been so many deaths. I don't know. Oh, it's kind of like saying slavery is a choice. You know what I mean? But I mean, it's it's still technically true. So like, I mean, like other people had agency, right? They could have chosen yeah, not yeah. to fight. <laughs> I guess so. You're right. Just lay down. I mean, I don't know though. I mean, how many of these deaths is he truly culpable for? And a lot of these fucking figures, by the way, it's like. There was either 7.4 million victims of uh, General uh, General Plan Ost and Hunger Plan, or um, or there was 17 million. There's okay. It's like you know what I'm saying. There's like it's so hard to fucking determine. I mean, I think the easiest one to determine with Hitler's count is the Holocaust. I mean, obviously the six million people who so, were killed in the fucking Holocaust. So you, you have to say the Holocaust right there. I mean, you have to give that. that there's, I don't think there's any question that's Hitler's total. Yes. that's very direct. Yeah, it's very direct. There's it's not obvious. a sort of... But there's so many other deaths that you can say, well, if Hitler hadn't started World War II, if he hadn't invaded this place or that place, if he hadn't invaded uh, the Soviet Union, then these people would still be alive. Or not still, but you know what I mean. Right. So it's kind of hard to say, like, oh, well, you know, Hitler was only responsible for those six million deaths. You could definitely attribute way more deaths to Hitler. I mean, like, if you want to be really brutal about it, you could you could basically do, say Hitler was cause of like a hundred million deaths, right? If you decided to say all of World War II is on him, uh, plus all the other deaths that he caused, I mean, probably not because well, some of those deaths were already calculated. It'd probably be like eighty million, ninety million people, nearly a hundred million people, depending on how you fucking count it. Yep. If you really want to be brutal with it, or you could go the route of saying, well, countries naturally go to war, that happens, and this and that, and it's not necessarily his fault or whatever, or he's not directly morally responsible or whatever the fuck you want to make case you want to make for that and say he's only responsible for the six million people killed in the Holocaust because that's directly him rounding up his own fucking citizens and fucking murdering them. Yeah, I don't know. Um, th- this is why, I don't know. Yeah, it's hard. It's hard to it's hard to make a judgment one way or the other because it's either one or the other. He's either responsible for all of these deaths in my mind or none of them, because you could just devolve into all the minutia of how many people had to support Hitler, including people just on the street, 
and they saw these things happening, and they knew that these things were happening. These were not, uh, not at least not all of these atrocities and, and uh, war campaigns were carried out in secret. And the people continued trudging along with it. So without them, what could Hitler have accomplished but just ranting from a fucking pedestal somewhere? Right. You know what I mean? So either he was the catalyst that brought all of that together, which I'm inclined to think <laughs> he is. I'm inclined to think that without the right kind of leadership at the top of this, all of that simmering hatred that had to lead to this being possible in this country may have gone a different direction. So let's look at Stalin really quick. The number of deaths most often attributed to Stalin is about 20 million. Now, some say this number is artificially inflated propaganda of the West, usually people who identify themselves as Marxists to this day, who do not want a picture of a bloodthirsty Stalin. But even these people have to fess up to about 3.5 million deaths, which is the number of deaths that were just like, People killed in, you know, political, like to, in matters of like repression and things. Right. They don't want to say he's responsible for the famines and shit like that. They say, well, the people he, you know, the crops failed. You know what I mean? Yeah. The people he directly killed, or not directly as in he personally pulled the trigger. Yeah, I'd say his hands would be tired. His policies directly led to the murders of these people. Sure. 3.5 million. So others say that due to shoddy Soviet record keeping, it's likely Stalin actually killed more than 20 million people. Some people, I've heard people claim as much as like, well, Stalin's actually, if you really count like this action and this action and what he did in this war and that thing, then it's actually like more like 80 million. So it's, it's how you define it, is what you're saying. Uh, ultimately, the answer to the question just depends on how you want to count the deaths, how you attribute the culpability. So, for instance, is Hitler responsible for many of the soldiers who died in World War II? Is Stalin responsible for every single person who died of famine in his country due to his bad policies in that regard? Um, you know, I don't know. Well, I think for the uh, case of argument, we, we have to agree that we just count them responsible for all of the deaths that happened on their watch. Yeah, because otherwise it becomes impo- we're we're just going to be you know yeah, how do you arrive at a number? Well, well, I'm going to give them this, but not that. I mean, like you, I think you just have to give them what has been attributed to them. I mean, obviously, like when you say 80 million, that's probably an extreme uh, a number, but I think we have to go with you know what uh, what data we have and what can be I, like I like Paul said directly attributed to their actions or to their policies. What happened on their watch? What happened yeah. while they were captain of the ship? Well, if that's the case then I don't think I have... I think I have no choice but to vote for Hitler. Okay. Because he kicked off World War II in a big way. You can, I guess it can be argued that Japan did. But certainly, he was a massive participant. At least some portion of those deaths are on his hands. And I think that brings his total to higher than 20 million, which is the most common number attributed to Stalin. So I'm going to say Hitler. Okay. Well, on that basis, I'll have to agree with yeah, you. Yeah, I'll give Hitler his first vote on this one, too. I haven't voted for Hitler yet tonight, but I think he earned this one. So the final question, and I think we're tied right now. Yeah, that's exciting. Wow, dude. Coming down to the last category. It's a horse race, dude. We're actually tied three to three. And the final question is, who had the most redeeming character traits? (laughs) What? Yeah. An odd category to end the tie. Well, you know, I just feel like, uh, you know, People, when they hear about some of the most evil people in history... They only the bad things, of course. Right, Well, but I think that, you know, I think people kind of want to fucking, like, man, there must have been something good about this motherfucker, right? There had to, he had to have done something nice at some point. Sure. Yeah, I can see that. So, like, Hitler was good to dogs. Right. You know what I mean? He, he, was, he liked dogs, he was cool with dogs, and he treated the, his dogs good. Maybe so, he lived in animal rights, too. There's an interesting thing that happens when you search for, like, what are the good things Hitler did? You encounter a lot of Nazis. So uh, yeah, no shit. Yeah, so you know, hmm. I had to try to fucking a bit biased. Yeah, I had to try to filter down the Nazi shit a little bit and find people who are actually being, you know, a little more honest. Hitler than that. tried to protect the white race. Yeah, <laughs> stuff shit, like yeah, shit like that. Hitler yeah. tried to take on the Jew bankers. You know, like so. All right, all right, all right calm down. <laughs> all right, well, uh, simmer down, boy. Simmer on down now. So I tried to find things that are a little bit less, uh, you know, divisive or whatever. Things that we can kind of all agree were probably good. Okay. Or at least a lot of us, whatever. Uh, So Hitler. Start with him. 
Um, and I think I have, I just fucking found some, that's not ready for that yet. All right, so I just found a picture of an angel, because <gasps> angels are good. He, he was a courageous and committed soldier during World War One. Can't take that away from him. Nope. Fought for his country in one of the most brutal fucking conflicts that ever took place on this uh, planet. A trench warfare. Absolutely. He won the Iron Cross. Uh, I'm sorry, the uh, Iron Class first and second class. Um, he, I believe he also uh, once mentioned in dispatches. He was mentioned in dispatches, which was rare for a soldier in his position. Uh, when he suffered from mustard gas, he was insistent to the hospital that he be returned to duty as soon as possible. He was a message runner, taking orders and information from command centers to the trenches. Uh, accounts from this period emphasize him as a pretty ordinary soldier. Let me ask you a although question. Although very before you go outspoken on. against any form of defeatism. What are the chances that this story that he has, this kind of origin story where he was a brave soldier and blah, 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 was manufactured to an extent? I mean, to an extent it was I'm because sure it was. Uh, the some, mustard some, gas, and I want to be well, right back on the front line tomorrow and get me back out there, you know? Well, a lot of that's corroborated. There's people who obviously spent time with Hitler in the military and stuff like that. But, um, you know, uh, like I said, most people say that he was a pretty run-of-the-mill soldier. He wasn't an exceptional great war hero. He was a pretty ordinary soldier. He did his job. He was uh, outspoken against defeatism. And obviously, we, I, think we can, I think it matches the character of Hitler to see him as sort of this iron-willed person who, you know, he's not going to let anything slow him down or stop him. Because that was just kind of how he approached every problem. Is like, I will not be stopped. I will fucking persist. I will fucking win. Sure. As long as I draw breath, I'm going to fucking be the winner. That That's not necessarily a, uh, an endearing character trait. Though. Not necessarily, but... Well, especially in this case. In war, kind of a useful thing. And he did serve his country and it can't be taken away. Whether he served with exceptionally or mediocrely, he definitely served. Yeah, he was there. And he won some medals, so obviously... I mean, he fought in fucking World War One. Right. That's right. There's world... gotta be grunts. Right. You know what I mean? Like, none of these highfalutin military commanders would have any kind of power without the dudes on the ground that actually have to execute the fucking order. Absolutely. So, you can't take that away. He... Like, that, that takes a certain amount of gumption, and there's some positive character traits associated with somebody that's willing to go that far in their life for an ideal. Absolutely. So uh, he passed the world's first animal rights legislation. Hey. Um, didn't really, wasn't great with human rights all the time. <laughs> but hey, it was animals. Um, so uh, open Liebensborn centers where unmarried women could quietly give up children for adoption anonymously. And the reason that that's a good thing is because, uh, you know, uh, a lot of times, there was the otherwise these children would just be abandoned in, right. like, dumpsters or, you know. Just left on the street. Like, left on someone's doorstep or something and with no guarantee that anyone's going to take care of them. Um, so, you know, obviously, uh, <laughs> obviously that's a good thing. Uh, he brought an industrial revolution to Germany after the First World War and uh, put forward the most powerful army the world has ever seen. Obviously, what he did with that army was pretty fucking awful, but... Uh, building up that army was a big part of the uh, sort of economic uh, boon that he brought to the country. So, um, you know, a lot of that stuff he accomplished was in the best interest of the German people. If he'd stayed with that sort of domestic policy, probably wouldn't be thought of as, as such an evil leader. Um, also, the whole genocide thing. Entrench the German values of perfection in work, punctuality, commitment, tad bit of seriousness and frankness was essential for its rebuilding. Yeah, uh, he laid out a vision for people that the German people rallied behind and were able to use to pull themselves up from absolute despair and humiliation. Uh, gave a chance and funding to in R&D to legendary scientists like Von Braun, who later got us to the moon. Uh, at first, he got warheads to London via his V-2. Yep, the V-1 and V-2 rockets. Um, Hitler, after uh, witnessing an autopsy, decided that meat was disgusting and uh, forgo uh, for for what was what's the what's the past tense of that? Forwent. 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 <laughs> I don't think that's right. Uh, he decided to forego meat. Uh, he became a vegetarian. He did not drink, so he had a small carbon footprint. Right. So, and he did, wasn't contributing to that. He didn't, and he didn't want to contribute to animal cruelty. Uh, because he had a soft spot for animals for whatever reason. 
Uh, now, it's said that his veganism and vegetarianism wasn't perfect. He cheated a little bit, but whatever. Uh, he did not drink. He did not smoke. He was a sharp dresser. He supported new technology. Uh, as we heard earlier, he could be a friendly and charismatic uh, person if he wanted to be. And most importantly of all, think about this. He killed Hitler. Wow. That's true. He did. Yeah. I mean, like, how bad could he really be? He killed Hitler. He's the guy who killed Hitler, for fuck's sake. Uh, so that's about all the fucking good shit I could dredge up on Hitler. Um, Stalin, on the other hand, has a whole fucking museum dedicated to how great he was. Of course he does. The Stalin Museum. The creepy attraction. I don't need your editorializing independent, okay? Yeah, In I'll Georgia, what's creepy. that still worships the communist leader like a god. Stalin, very good poet, our guide declares in a monotone hooded eye. Eyes a testament to uh, post-Soviet apathy. Also, beautiful singing voice. She stands beneath an array of surprisingly handsome portraits of the former dictator at a young age. A hipster dreamboat beneath his bouffant and manicured mustache. The display would have you believe while members of the group shift uneasily. Forget about gulags and purges. In the Stalin Museum in Gory, Georgia, staff wax poetic on the dictator's Butch Cassidy-like exploits as a bank robber, Count of Monte Cristo-esque escaping abilities, five times he escaped Siberia, our guide boasts, as well as his fabled artistry. Here's his death mask. Yeah, there's his death mask right there. Um, first opened in 1957, the museum complex sits beside the house in which Joseph Stalin was born in 1878. It has definitely resisted de-Stalinization. The removal of Stalin's name and effigy from public spaces following his death in a bid to curb his cult of personality, as well as a more recent Georgia-led campaigns to convert the facility into a museum on repression, to this day it remains a shrine to the uh, sanguinary bureaucrat. The Stalin Museum is most certainly most authentic in terms of the Soviet-era feel captured by the decor, the installations, and the general ambiance created by the staff that are not only passionate about the subject, but in a way also in awe of the man, says uh, Tinitin Japaridzi, I don't know, a native Georgian uh, researching the country's post-Soviet identity at Columbia University. The whole effect is indeed uh, Church of Stalin-like. Upon entering the facility, a plush red carpet Set atop a marble staircase leads you to an imposing statue of the Soviet-era ruler. Um, standing beneath a stained glass window, visitors are invited to make their way through a series of spacious rooms containing encased memorabilia, including Stalin's last pack of cigarettes and favorite winter coat. Oh, damn. Nice. Look, I want to smoke one of them cigarettes out of that and fucking a slew Stalin of, pack, dude. Yeah, hell yeah. And a slew of paintings featuring the Soviet premier lifting children into his arms, or declaiming before rapt committee members, a likely exaggeration. Historians agree his oratory skills were limited. In no room was the sense that the museum was a shrine more evident than when in the room with his death mask. It was similar to walking into a house of worship. So here's the thing about Stalin. Um, Hitler might have some, some alienated fucking youth reading Mein Kampf and being like, actually, Hitler wasn't so bad. But it's still a reasonably mainstream position in certain parts of Russia and Georgia to say that Stalin was pretty cool. He was great. Like, they don't necessarily view him as uh, the same way that we do as this fucking super evil dictatorial despot. Dude, look at those cigars, TJ. Don't tell me you wouldn't want like, to like one of those up right now. To this day, they find him an inspirational figure. He's like a cowboy. Yeah. You know what I mean? He was uh, the Lone Ranger and, um, you know... Uh, uh, fucking Schwarzenegger's character from Commando, all wrapped into one. Yep. Uh, so Stalin is generally reviled in Georgia due to uh, the series of repressions and small caucuses nation uh, suffered when, under Stalin's command, the Soviet Union invaded in 1921. Uh, and to this day, anti-Russian feelings run deep, especially following the five-day Russo-Georgian War of 2008. And, of course, uh, Georgia is a place where a lot of uh, terrorism towards Russia is uh, is bred. And yet, despite its Soviet and Russia-imposed bloody history, some Georgians are proud to lay claim to Stalin, a powerful leader for all his faults, they say. That rings especially true in Gori. Uh, Stalin's continued popularity in his native country is not so much related to Georgia's nostalgia for the Soviet Union, but rather linked to his Georgian roots, producing an inherent sense of nationalism. 
<laughs> so basically, uh, there's a fucking museum that runs to this day. Talking about how great Stalin was. Talking about all his Detailing great all his very real exploits. Yeah, um, so uh, obviously, uh, you know, when we really look beyond the mythology of the outlaw, um, usually it's a pretty brutal of course. person underneath. But it can definitely be something that uh, sets the uh, the imagination, you know, uh, a flutter. And like we saw that in a lot of the early American outlaws. And Stalin started off as a fucking outlaw. Um, so there's a certain romanticization there that I think captures the uh, the spirit. But uh, I don't know if that's necessarily a redeeming trait. It was a little bit harder to find uh, any traits about Stalin that were like overtly redeeming. Like he was super nice to this or he well, did this nice thing. Well, that's not the image thing. he wanted to project, though. So that's right. not the things that people are going to remember about him. It was his stern leadership and his effectiveness as a, an administrator. I, that- I like the uh, caption at the top here. Notably will be absent of, on the museum's main floors any sign of the dictator's murderous practices and policies. That's a shock. The Can't Stalin Museum. It. They're not going to be like, and then Stalin had these people killed. They're, they're not going <clears> to. <throat> so, yeah, uh, th- I didn't really find as much on Stalin, but, uh, you know, the people, there's people that love him to this day in Russia. There's people that love him to this day in Georgia. Love him or hate him, he's Stalin. They view him as uh, a positive force that brought their country in a positive direction. So that's that, I guess. <sighs> I mean, <sighs> from what I can see here, we have kind of, well, at least in my mind, I feel like I have two choices. I can either I can either overcomplicate this or oversimplify it. And I like simplifying things. So I'm going to oversimplify it down to the good old American tradition of which one of these dudes would I want to have a beer with? <clears throat> Who would I want to sip a beer with more between these two guys? And I got to say there's a pretty obvious choice for me. Well, the fact of the matter is that only one of these guys drank beer. Well, I don't care. So. I'm talking in a hypoth- I'm just talking How about, about the hot cocoa with me, Paul. I'm not necessarily talking about the beer. I'm talking about like this sit down conversation that happens you, over a beer. Who would you want to chill with for a minute? Yeah. Get who would I want to kick back with and play some fucking video games with or something Whatever. for 10 minutes? Yeah. And I got to be honest with you, I think that at least from what we've learned, Hitler would be way more capable of giving me something that would be kind of an enjoyable social interaction and way more apt to do so. Yeah than Stalin would. Stalin would probably just sit there very quietly and wait for you to offend him and then 10 years later come back and garage you. Yeah, you fucking whip his ass at Street Fighter, dude. (laughs) You know what I mean? And And Hitler might end up killing you anyway, but at least you'd probably, you know, he'd flatter you a little bit. He'd be, uh, you know, courteous and receptive to courtesy. He'd be, you know, he'd probably be engaged with what you were talking about. He'd have a conversation with you. He'd blow the foam off a big fucking head of suds. You know what I mean? (laughs) Put your fucking feet up on the bar stool and have a conversation. I don't think I'd be doing that with Stalin. I don't think I don't think Stalin would be doing that with I think it was his style. Stalin would be like, you know, he'd be the one going, "Ah, that's nice, Paul. I I gotta go. So in my oversimplified worldview of uh, he who uh, I'd rather have a beer with has the most redeeming character traits, I'm going with Hitler. Um I'm also gonna go with Hitler because you know, everything that I found about Stalin's uh, nicer side always comes across as completely manipulative. Yeah, it, it whereas seem it like seems Stalin like Stalin had that in it within him, really. Right. It seems like Stalin, to the core of his being, was a pretty harsh, just a ruthless, pragmatic. Yeah, Machiavellian. There was some sort psychopath. of psychopath. There was a little bit of idealism in Hitler, and there was even maybe a little smidgen of compassion somewhere. Obviously, it expressed itself in very limited, stunted ways. But um, I got to agree with Paul. And I mean, the fact that Hitler would glad hand and shit means that at least I could there's a potential I might meet and, meet the fake nice Hitler. Uh, yeah. And, and Hitler that's going to patronize me with like, well, hey, how you doing? What, you know, and Hitler even remembered this. Like, like I brought the story about the physician that saved his brother or him or something like Hitler fucking at least yeah, exempted the guy. Yeah. There was still at least like something to Hitler. Like, so yeah, there was like I'm a sense of all these people. But because you helped me and you actually were good, I, like you're one of the good Jews. Like they, they do exist. So. so there was a sense in him of like, I owe that guy something. Yeah. And Stalin would have been like, that never happened. <laughs> Erase that from history and murder that piece of shit. Oh, Stalin had people fucking removed from photographs, dude. Yep. I mean, so. I mean, he killed some of his best friends because he of like the most mild distrust. Yeah. So, I mean, I think you have to vote for Hitler. I'm sorry. I mean, it's not. I hate to vote for Hitler on anything. Damn. But 
I think you have to vote for Hitler, Scotty, 2019. <laughs> so the overall winner, Hitler. Yep. Hitler by a nose. It, it was a close one. It was definitely a horse race on this one. I didn't expect it to be, but I did, uh, however, expect that Hitler would end up at the top of this game. You just can't escape the Hitler these days. You know what I mean? I mean, look. He's at, the bottom of every political discussion. It's Hitler. It's at a, the Hitler end of the day, there. you know, if someone wants to insult you politically or call you a fascist or fucking be like you're... And both sides do it. Right. Like both not political call, sides, it's not even, they it's not even distinct you, to his politics anymore. Right. They, ain't even call, they ain't calling you fucking Stalin. No. They're calling you Hitler. You might have Stalin brought up as they're, you know, critiquing your policies, but when it comes to the just the base, I'm gonna point my finger and say you're like somebody. You're getting compared to Hitler. You know what I mean? Yeah. Ten times out of ten, if someone is just Godwin's you law, got it. Godwin's law always wins. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? You and at the end of it. the day, it was a close one. But uh, I guess Hitler wins. But Hitler's Hitler. That's yeah. the way it goes. Um, well, what else can you say? He's Hitler. I mean, you know, he needs I, no introduction. He needs no more fluff or puffery or bullshit. So that's how the meatball bounces, motherfuckers. Hope you enjoyed. Bye-bye. Bye bye. Bye.